Oh, day 38. Mm-hmm. Man, I never know what day, even though we do these things all the time. I'm always off. But I didn't even know what day it was today because ever since that day that they took down my periscope, I got all turned about. Hey, everyone. So, uh, day 38 of the Vegas shutdown here in Las Vegas. <laughs> the Vegas shutdown in Las Vegas. <laughs> I'm obviously still half asleep right now. So, yeah, we're feeling a little bit uh, frustrated here in Vegas because, you know, we just love making art all day long. That's what we do. But then we put it up to social media and it's like it just gets no response and it just gets frustrating. Like you don't get the like even barely any views on any of these apps. And I don't know what happened. It's like we used to get views and then now we stop. It's like they don't they don't distribute our stuff at all. Probably because we're very controversial. But it just gets a little bit frustrating because, like, Jedi Rich takes so much time making these awesome videos. And then they get, like, 20 views. <laughs> You're like, gee Louise. You know? And um, what's frustrating is a lot of people kind of cheat, in a sense, on social media. Um, where there's, We're finding out. We did not know. We've been doing uh, social media now for about um, three years of where we were, like, doing it the way we were doing it now. Where we're always on there. And... We're just now figuring out that everyone's been like buying their vote, buying their votes, buying their um, views, and buying uh, their subscribers. And we just got an email from someone saying, "Hey, give us money, and you can buy. We'll buy you subscribers and stuff." And we're like, "What?" It's just kind of crazy. So we're like trying all this time through your, and then you find out everyone's just been buying their subscribers and views all along. It's just kind of like. It's a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a scam, in the sense of they 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 convince people that they can become millionaires on YouTube because there's one guy that plays games that you know made millions. They oh I'm gonna be the next millionaire on YouTube or whatever, and then they they make you think you're gonna get all these views, but really you gotta start paying them to get the views. So there's kind of a scam there. So I'm starting to wonder how much people are really getting paid because how much are they investing? See, that's the thing. People think, oh, oh, they're getting all that all that for the views. But you don't know how much that person now has invested in buying themselves uh, views or uh, subscribers. And you actually do that to YouTube. We found out in order to ever get paid by YouTube, you have to first give them your credit card because and we're like, wait, why do we have to give you our thing to, you know, pay you if you're supposed to pay wow. us, you know? And after this person says it, it undermines creativity. Yeah, and it's really frustrating because we work so hard, and we obviously don't pay for our stuff since we get 20 views on things. You know, the, thing is, the fortunate thing is that we don't, we've never done it for the views of the subscribers. Yeah, we never did it for that, but there is a frustrating sense when you work really hard and you get, like, 20 views, especially on, that, like... That, that's actually not frustrating. What the issue I think you're having is is that when you look at other people who started doing similar projects at the same time with the same amount of followers... That after you yeah, see it, that, that you, that where you see their stuff is kind of garbage, and, and it just getting, keeps growing and growing, and you're like, either... People are retarded and they just want to see garbage or this person is just buying their stuff or what is going on here because you'll see people just putting out garbage and getting all these views and you're like, what am I doing wrong because I'm making quality stuff and then I'm getting no views and then you just don't know what's going on. Right. It's, it's just a weird system. I think what the person was saying is that, that, that then what you see is like you see the artists like us, you're kind of like... Fortunately, we don't do it for the subs. Yeah, unfortunately, we don't do it for... But we, there, it does come a point where you do say, you know, you want people to see it. It's not about getting views or subscribe, you know, like it's in not, the sense... It's like, you, but you want people to see what you made. Actually, what, it's not that. I think what frustrates you is that when you go out there and you look at, like, let's say you did a video of Al Giant Stadium, mm -hmm. right? And someone else went the same day and mm -hmm. did the same video shoot mm -hmm. and you spent a lot of time and you put music on it and did all this stuff right. and you shot this video and you got 90 views and right. the other person goes out and spends 20 minutes drives around it and doesn't right edit. people really do this half ass and stuff and somehow if they have the subscribers they can literally put dog shit out and they'll get all these subscribers and then we are like Joe Rich like it, I mean he takes 
uh, countless hours to make these videos and we we do we go out there we're doing these music videos now it's a lot of work i mean i was out there the other day in my uh, big old boots walking in the rocks because we hadn't planned on walking as much as we did um or otherwise i would have worn my um other shoes but then we wanted to i wanted my boots for the photo shoot because we were doing a music video but i didn't know we were going to walk so much so we ended up i'm um, like trekking on and their boots are like four or five inches um and uh and then we did the music video, and we were out there at like 3 a.m. doing this stuff, and then we put it up, and it gets like 20 views, you know. And Jai Rich spent like so much time putting this, and we, you know, these like, and, and that's just a little bit frustrating. It's not, because obviously we're not even paid. You can't, you know, we're not getting paid on YouTube. It's, and we're not getting paid on any, any platform. But, um, especially not YouTube. That's where most people make money. I don't even know how they make money on some of these other platforms. Uh, I don't know how you make money on Twitter unless um, you're being paid by someone else, like if you're uh, if you're sponsored or something. I don't right. know how you so, get... But I think that yeah. you see the frustration that we're talking right. about here. Right, right. Okay, no, I don't... I don't but yeah, then when you go on the thing and then you start seeing that the comments that... The comments that we receive are, you guys are the fucking worst thing ever. And then the other person puts out, garbage literally puts out garbage it's like oh my gosh thank you so yeah. much you, you're so amazing so when you see the comments of the people you're like you start to wonder like like what is going on here in this alternate reality where 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 a dumbo can get like 20,000 views by just driving around the thing and get money for that yet we stay up all night and make music and then get 20 views so that's the contract again it, it's not the if he got 20 views we'd be like oh that's fair he gets 20 views too but no he's getting 20,000 views so right. how is that and that's where you're trying to talk about how is that happening right right okay yeah so you guys just heard what he said so it's it's just that it's not a cool system because you can have people that it's like the art doesn't actually get appreciation I don't know what the system is but just garbage gets promoted and then the people that put out, like, I'll see a, other people make these amazing videos, and they just will get barely any views, like, on Twitter, like, I'll, I'll, and then you'll see just nonsense, you know, getting the same on YouTube, all of them, um, and it, it really is frustrating for the people that are actually making the content. Everyone has the, uh, you know, consumer, oh, I don't like that, I don't like this, and they want to say rude stuff, but when you're out there making the art, it's mm -hmm. it's it's hard. People and it's, are cheating, I think, is what, the, is what we're saying. Yeah, and people cheat. And a lot of people, they do this thing, too, um, which you can, I, I know a girl, <laughs> I know a girl, a working girl, that did this stupid thing with Twitter where she, For example. she would go and follow thousands of people a day and then get herself suspended because you can't do that they don't like that's spammy so they would suspend her account so i i was kind of had been friends with her for a little bit and i was like hey what happened to your thing you know and then i found out now I, I messaged her like twice about it and then i realized she did that every single day and i was like oh she's doing this and she just knows this happened so every single day they would shut down her account and they bring it back and then she kept getting more and more subscribers because she was following, following, following her followers. But then finally, Twitter took her down. They said, okay, but two years she did that. Right. And she built her thing up to like 60,000 followers or something. Um, and she you know, was promoting. And it's like, I was glad of, uh, that they finally stopped that because it's kind of, it just doesn't make the system very fair or make it, make the, it doesn't let the actual good art go out and just uh, continues the garbage. So then we just have a bunch of crap, you know, and we're seeing that with the celebs too. That's true. The celebs are not, they are putting out garbage. They're just putting out garbage and we have to just be like, oh, that, oh, it's Miley Cyrus or Justin Bieber. I mean, literally Justin Bieber's last couple of videos, uh, um, it just he it's like could you guy give any it's like he if he feels like if he looks like he's into it that would not make him look cool I'm like it look like he's like even the dances his dancers look way more into it than him he's doing this thing where he's like I'm too cool to act like I care and he probably doesn't care but then that's just the energy everyone has and he he is you know uh well, he's one of the biggest people on social media, whether you like him or not. The guy's got like 100 million followers. So people follow what he does, whether they like him or not. Like young kids say, oh, it's cool to just be so nonchalant and be like, 
oh, put out crap, and I don't care. Let me take a shit on that and give it to you guys. And that's just like the attitude of the celebs lately. I've not seen, I have not seen like a quality music video in a long time. And we are all about, like we watch so many music videos. When we lived in Panama, Panama, um, we were in the country, Panama, people think I'm talking about Florida. Um, we were in Panama City, Panama. And um, they had these amazing channels of so much music, which we, we don't have that in the U.S. We had a couple of channels, and they all become just TV channels like MTV and VH1. They become TV programs like stupid... Um, commercialized. Commercialized instead of actual music videos. Why but do you we, think they did that at MTV? I mean, I mean, think about it. The music videos that we used to see were so good. And they were so good, and we and I have watched. I've watched countless hours of kid, music yeah. videos. When um, growing up, we had there was this channel called the Tube. I don't know if anyone ever watched that on. It was on uh, uh, cable. They had it for a while. I don't remember which cable um, company, but it was just non-stop music videos with no commercials, just music and just years of music videos, like hundreds of you know however long they've been doing music videos. Um, not a hundred years old. <laughs> uh, I was gonna. I was gonna say they had like these hundred. They would have the hundred best countdowns and stuff. It was. It was pretty cool. And there was so much art out there, and artists would pour their hearts out into their music videos. I mean, you could see the passion. Now it's like, okay, that Ed Sheeran, Justin Bieber one. I don't care. Is what the song's called. Yeah. Is this? You they went into a room with a green screen. They didn't care. And they did maybe 20 minutes of putting things on, and they green screen it, and then they left the green screen up. Like, they did, They were showing how little they put. And then all of the things behind them, you know, were added because they were in a green screen. But they even showed they were in a green screen. So they showed they didn't even go to any of those things. They just went to a green screen, put on some masks or an outfits, danced for about 20 minutes, and that was and it's the... The song was literally called I Don't Care. And I thought, yeah, you, I could see that. Um, and I have not seen, like, some just... I haven't seen something where I go, wow, from anyone with any kind of clout. I see that from someone with no followers, and then they get, like, 10 views. Sometimes I do. I'll see these amazing photos or videos. And those people are never... It's, so it's just kind of frustrating that the system does not promote good art if anything it promotes garbage and cheating because people are now there's these systems where you can buy your subscribers buy your um youtube's all about i guess buying for your ads in order to get uh views so like you pay youtube and then they promote your videos and i didn't right. realize that i did not know that that though up until literally about when Jerry told me about three months ago, I think, I thought everyone was earning all of their subscribers and views on YouTube. I thought, wow, I don't know how this person gets a million views, but geez, fantastic. And now I realize, like, probably 99% bought that along the way. You know, I mean, I, I get, they get views well, that's the big but, thing. Is that, is but that it's like it becomes frustrating because then you're like so unless i pay unless i pay youtube or pay these little scams along the way that say all oh, all oh, boost up your stuff or whatever these things these shams going on then you get no views because apparently the apps will not spread your stuff very much unless you're paying them like youtube we found out that Unless you start paying them, because we were getting the stuff in the beginning. It's like in the beginning they let you get your or views if you're and content, yeah. you know, and then and then as you get closer to you know where you're starting to have so like closer to a thousand subscribers or something, then all of a sudden you get like no views. You don't get spread out. I mean, we honestly, you don't even get like shown in people's feeds. They have to go to your thing to see your videos like it won't like if like someone subscribe it won't often show up in their feed as in you have a new video it'll be like they have to go to your thing so it's like youtube is not showing your stuff they want you to pay them in order to right, get right 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 so you're to, like this is a sham well here's the here's the bigger sham is that as if i'm quickly going to youtube to choose two videos to watch mm -hmm. and one has seventeen thousand views and another has 80 
Mm-hmm. Which one are you going to click yeah, people on? always click on the one with more right. views. And that's, what- and that's why people pay for their views. So it's continually promoting crap as long as people pay for it. You know and what I mean? And you go, oh, why did people pay for it? Well, because they pay for it and then they make more. So they end up making... Excuse me. <coughs> They'll, it's like an investment. They'll pay. They'll pay. You know, th- there's there's a thing to pay five hundred dollars. Oh wow, sheesh! Five hundred dollars people pay, and it's a monthly thing. Get this. This is the scam. So, uh, what you do is you sign yourself up, and you have to sign yourself up for some month. Is it monthly or weekly? Well, there's two different. Which one are you talking about? YouTube or YouTube? YouTube. What is the thing? You looked into it. Well, yeah, YouTube it? is like you pay every day. They charge you. Tell them how much you want to pay a day. So you tell them. Every, so then. If you now are making videos, let's say you're someone that's got a million subscribers, maybe you even have, but let's say you had to uh, pay YouTube to get those, which is what we're finding out. So every day you say what amount you want to pay YouTube and they have a minimum and a maximum. What's the minimum? Uh, $50. Minimum is $50 a day. Maximum, well, oh, probably, no. oh, probably, well, you five, could keep going, but, um, $5. But they say they recommend to do five hundred dollars a day. Was no, it fifty dollars on that? Fifty a day. Okay, fifty a day. But so that means, um, and it's and you set it up to where it automatically withdraws from your account. So whether you make a video or not, every day you're paying YouTube whatever that amount you said the fifty dollars. So, wait, so let, me, let me sum it up real quick. What Jay Joy is trying to sum up with all these numbers are getting confused. Okay. With all the numbers, what she's saying is that when you see a YouTuber with a bunch of views and a bunch of subscribers, a very good chance that they're fooling you. Mm-hmm. And that they're pay- that paying a good portion, because here's the thing, it's actually a scam. Like, that person's almost getting scammed from YouTube, is what I'm finding out. A lot of people are getting scammed, like, they think they're going to become stars, and then they are investing so much, because what it is, is they make you, they say, okay, you want your video promoted? Then start, uh, tell us what you're going to pay each day, and so that's that $50 that we talk about, but then it automatically comes out. They make you do that. It's automatically every day now you're going to be charged $50. So whether you make a video or not. So that's why you see these people now putting out a video every day because they now ha- are investing $50 or whatever amount every single day whether they're making money or not. So then you see these people panicking, putting out a million videos of just crap. Because Did that break? No. Okay. Um, of just crap. And thank you. Here's my Gerald Center. My favorite, you guys. I got my favorite. These are my favorite sparkling waters. So we only do water and sparkling water. Um, but these are my favorite. They're from, um, they're, I think they're a German uh, brand. Yeah. Ger- oh, they're from Geraldstein, Germany. That makes sense. I didn't know that until just now. That's why they're called that. Okay. But anyways, um, they have great minerals. So, so, so now these people are panicking because they're investing every day, let's say the $50 they chose. And now they're like, oh, I need to put out another video because, oh my gosh, I'm spending $50 whether I made money or not. You know what I mean? So now they start panicking and putting out garbage instead of putting out quality because every day they want a new video out. Does that make sense? You know what I mean? Because every day they're spending $50 and they only make money when you view their videos. So if, let's say, they made a video two days ago, well, now they've spent $50, $50, oh, gosh, I need to get another video out. So it actually creates uh, this rushiness of garbage, too. And that's Uh, why YouTube is so lame. Yeah, that's why it's becoming lamer and lamer. Um, And I didn't know it was that way. Like, I I, I didn't, we looked into this thing because we heard about this people, you know, that you had to buy your ads and all this stuff. We don't have any money. Yeah, we don't have any money. I mean, because what happens is people get in this sham, uh, they they, uh, get in this thing where, because let's say you're making a couple hundred dollars, but you're having to invest, let's say you're having to invest $500, $500, but you're making $800. So you're netting 300 but you're having to invest 500 So it's scary because are you going to get that 300 So that's why people start panicking, making video after video, and like, oh gosh, I got I to gotta get my money back. See where it's this system where you're already in the hole. Now let me get this money back. So you, it just becomes... Um, cyclical. Yeah, cyclical. Digital cycle. Yeah. 
And then you start to see these people with a lot of subscribers putting out crappier stuff. Because they get hooked on that thing. They get they... hooked on, I got it, I got it, I got it. Have you guys ever done um, proactive? Yeah, they bro. Your account every month. They charge, yeah, whether you, you don't need it or not, and you get and all these supplies is, coming in, and you're like, okay, mentality. stop, stop. It's the, really hard to cancel, mm -hmm. and when you do cancel, then you're like, well, gosh, was it helping? Right, and then you won't maybe get any views cause, yeah. because that's how a lot of these people are getting views is they pay YouTube and then YouTube um, promotes them. It's very easy to get views. They will, it says, it literally says, for X amount of money, you will get X amount of views. It's that kind of system. They say, easy. they say if you spend you this amount this. of money, we will give you this amount of views. I mean, it's, it's, that's how it's it is on YouTube. It's that easy. They say, you just pay them and they, yeah, they and then you get, so if you want a million views, you pay them and they will give you a million views. So... But then you go, well, that's just garbage. And that's why we have garbage in, on there. You know, and I'm not saying all of a sudden, but you'll, sometimes you'll see some great videos that only have a couple, handful of views. Yeah. Amazing stuff, you know. And then you'll see, oh, what is this with a million views? And you're like, why did I even waste my time looking at that? And those are the ones that clearly people paid for their ads and everything. Yeah, and, and they do their own stuff. Oh, oh yeah, and people also, you know, make a lot of fake accounts and comment on their stuff to get their stuff going. Like they'll say, "Oh, you were so wonderful to themselves." Oh god, you know. <laughs> and we know that they do because if you do social media, you'll find that you don't get that many positive comments. Yeah, it's not I mean, positivity. you get a little bit once in a while, but I mean, there more people are more negative than positive. So if someone is just getting nonstop positive on any social media app. Right. Everything they do is just flowery. Oh, you're the best. You're like, yeah, you're probably just commenting to yourself. Because, um, uh, there, I mean, people are just not that positive. And you'll find out, even, I mean, unless it's your grandma or something. And even then, my grandma was never positive. Are you kidding me? But some people's grandmas maybe are. But um, I always laugh when I see, or just I'll see someone um, with their troll accounts retweeting their own stuff or retweeting positive comments to themselves you're like well now i know that's your troll account because no <laughs> no one would retweet positive stuff about someone else like people right. don't care about well, other people at that like, level you know what i mean okay you have a very good point because people are, there's a lot of jealousy and envy on the social media so like for example we sent one of our co-youtubers a gift Oh yeah, and, and the guy didn't even say thank you. Yeah, we sent we sent one of the guys that we got him a hat just like ours, but um, no, we sure. put his his yeah, thing on it. We don't want to embarrass him. But, 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 but we found that to be extremely rude. Negative. We sent him a hat. He didn't even say thank you. This is an idea that. Not cool. until we said, "Hey man, did you get your hat? Oh, and what yeah. do you think? Oh, oh sure yeah, thank it. you. We, we were, yeah, we got him this, but we got his his thing on there. So I'll think about if I want to say or not. Um. And and we just thought because he lost his job here in Vegas, and uh, we don't have money, so we thought. I mean, these are like thirty bucks or something, and we we we're trying to be nice because we're like, man, that's life. Times are hard. Let's be nice to a fellow. Um, actually, I'm a whole on. That's cool. Okay, yeah. On. yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Um, be nice to another fellow YouTuber that lost his job here in Vegas. He's working at the casinos and got laid off. Like, I don't even say thank you. Yeah, I mean, that really stunned me. He, I, I would expect at least a shout-out. He has so many subscribers. We have so little. I think the guy would be like, hey, man, you check out this other guy. But they don't do that here. See, that's why Vegas... Maybe is I will say. Should I say who it is? I, I don't think you need to. I, it, well, I, people there's care. no need to. Nobody here knows who he is. And one person would know would be him. So... We don't like to call people out. He's not that famous. Too. Sometimes we call people out, but sometimes we... Uh, I like him, so I, I don't want to call him out. I just yeah. think that... He's, he's misguided and lost his way. Well, here's the thing. There's a lot of jealousy that occurs and a lot of hate. And we get so much hate. And jealousy occurs for not for people go, oh, I ain't jealous of you or what you have that I, I don't like you or, you know. But people get jealous of other people's happiness. That's the biggest thing that happens. Like, if people see other people enjoying themselves and if they're depressed, they get really hey, mad. Hey, it's a crazy girl. <laughs> Speaking of, uh, <laughs> uh, thanks. Perfect timing. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. 
Uh, they get jealous of other people's happiness. So me and Jai Rich are always happy. So people get so mad. They're like, how come you guys are happy? How can you be happy? We are happy with no money. We have like zero dollars. Yesterday, I was able to work so we could get some weed and food. And now we're down to zero dollars and we even owe rent. We, we're, we're two days well, behind on that. Rent. Huh? Nobody owes rent. The rent's free this month. Well, I know. what This is actually, they're being nice because people aren't paying. So they're trying to work with people. Uh, we've been paying. We're only two days out. behind. They but they're going to give us one day free. So as soon as I get the money, hopefully this weekend when I work, then they're actually going to give us one day. Because we pay by the week. But they're going to give us one day off of the week. So that's cool. So I thought that was nice. But they're trying to Would get... Would you like to just one hit? Just take one? Well... Yeah, yeah. Take one, though. Don't do yeah. ten. Don't like normally do. Just, oh, I'm, I'm just build up coffee. right now. Just pull, the, just pull it and then coffee. suck it. And hand it back to me. Just do one. There, just do one. <coughs> no. Okay, she's going to do... And then she's going to cough for 20 minutes, though. Oh, that's not even going anyway. Okay. Okay. See, if she does if she does too many, it took it a little bit. It's nice <laughs> such a... Nice such a hack for an hour. <laughs> On camera, I figured, you know. <coughs> There you go. I thought I got the impulse to share with you. <coughs> Thank you. <coughs> so now I need more coffee. Sorry, give me two seconds. <coughs> so <coughs> people are jealous of other people's happiness. <coughs> okay, watch. Well, I'll just kind of mention a couple of here. Yeah, it's probably not a good idea. Well, let me see. That was the coolest thing that she showed me. <coughs> this guy got a smoke blower. Oh, yeah. And he filled it with a bucket full of weed. And he started blowing smoke. <coughs> yeah, maybe don't do that necessarily. <laughs> oh, sorry. My bad. <coughs> Here, we got some comments coming in. Hey, when are you going to start dancing again? Dancing is like... <coughs> On the... Well, I think they dancing. Can, no, they don't yeah, allow, they allow that on Periscope. Periscope. They don't like dancing. They don't allow dancing on Periscope. I must be a really old person. Yeah, this must be an old father. Yeah, yeah, they one. don't allow dancing. I got banned every time I danced on Periscope. They would flag me. It's too much sexuality. Um, but singing, we might do today. We have been very busy. That's the thing people don't realize how busy we are, even though Vegas is shut down. Well, we've we're been busy, busy because we're because we're actually trying to get people fired up. About yeah. That. So hey, you guys, we've been doing all of these um, theme songs and uh, <coughs> <coughs> trying to get the party started. So so please go check them out on YouTube. Um, Jedi Rich, creative producer. It's Jedi Rich. Go check out our new videos. We've, we've been doing check. all these cool videos, um, and. You can also just go to JediRich.com, our website. They're all on there, but we got all these tabs. So it's easy if you just probably go straight to YouTube because they're all in one place. Our website actually is hard to find things sometimes, to be honest. Yeah, I keep it like that. Um, that's why we do links to it. because. But anyways. Um, I spent my whole a lot of my career building the websites that... I had to view it from the dumbest consumer, making it the easiest to navigate. Now, is like, now I'm doing the exact opposite. I <laughs> is what but um, check them out. So we did the Vegas Raiders uh, song. So if you like this, it's all me singing. So that's always enjoyable. You can hate on it. I don't care. I'm not a singer. That's the thing. Well, I was bulimic for 50. That's a good point about the hate. Okay. Let's talk about the... Because you stopped talking about, like, why is it that people... <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 don't, don't want to take the time to learn, like, about new music or something different. They want the same mediocrity. Oh, right. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. it goes back to yeah, yeah, and I'll tell you why. Because here's what happens is uh, it goes back to your diet and your health um, at the end of the day. That's why I talk about it so much. Because there was a time that most people, some people never, some people now have been unhealthy their whole life. But a lot of people, there's a time that they go back to that they remember that was like their favorite time where like they felt the best a lot of times it was either high school college maybe junior high maybe never because maybe you haven't experienced that but i know the older gen well, probably experienced that where they're like yeah i remember when i was feeling great i was fit you know what i felt the good, old days. the good old days well often what you'll do is those you'll reminisce those times and that's the time that you latched on to where you liked the music and the movies and the tv shows and if you don't 
continue with your health, like, if you then now are unhappy with your health, like you've gotten overweight or you, you don't have the energy, then you probably still are going to latch on to those old days because you don't have any new ones. But if you continued to stay healthy like we're doing, then you find new things. But what happens, a lot of people have not done that. And so they just latch onto the old stuff and they don't like new stuff because they're all they feel comfortable with is what they felt comfortable with when they felt most comfortable with themselves. Does that make sense? Because that's when you, you like other people's stuff when you feel comfortable with yourself. It's a funny thing of like, you know, that, this they say, you can't really love until you, anyone else till you love yourself. And it's true. You're going to hate everyone else's art when you're hating on yourself. So if right now you don't feel comfortable in your own shoes, in your own clothes, in your own skin, then you're not going to like anything that you see new. But you're going to like the stuff that you remembered when you were comfortable in your own skin. Does that make sense? So often that would be high school. A lot of people go, oh, I loved my body in high school and I was feeling good and I, you know, felt hot and this and that. So they'll latch on to the music, the TV shows, right. the and movies they, they from those right days. Because it's so long ago, they associate being thin with being happy. Right. But, but really, they're healthy. It's wow. healthy. And thin is happy because it's healthy. That's the bottom line. This is the big problem. The, the, you can have fat people that look good. We're not saying that. You can have very attractive fat people. I, I'm not saying you're ugly if you're fat. Don't don't let don't hear that. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is you will always feel better when you are thinner to the weight you need to be, like the where your body needs to be. I don't know what that weight is for you or that size or that shape, but there is a spot, and everyone has either felt it or they know that they can like they have that dream body or idea of for themselves right that's the spot we're talking about where you're going to be the healthiest anything above that now you start to become less healthy so you feel less happy less comfortable in your own skin even if you still look attractive. So this is where we have the problem of don't say fat's ugly, don't call people fat. Okay, well, we don't want to say fat people are ugly because that's just mean and they're not ugly. There's very, very beautiful fat people. But there is a point where the fat becomes unhealthy and it becomes unhealthy for that individual and that individual could feel better and healthier if they were thinner and everyone that's a different size okay so we're not saying a certain number I don't know what it is for you I don't know but you you know and you know in your head like you and you just know and you've been that number you numbers I hate saying number because we don't want you don't weigh yourself don't weigh yourself that I mean just if you, if you start doing what we do you don't need to weigh yourself um, like we eat organics but what I'm saying is there's that ideal size and when you're not that size you actually start to become unhealthy and what happens when you become unhealthy is you start to get depressed because your body doesn't like that your brain goes no I want to be healthy so you have this conflict and like I said fat is also because you're producing too much insulin and insulin alone will tell your body to store fat and makes you depressed so it's like this vicious cycle so insulin uh, tells everything to calm down you know to chill and also store fat and then the more fat you have the more you want to chill and so, so it's like this constant vicious cycle and um so the more weight you gain the more you won't feel good at the end of the day and you'll feel worse about yourself not because of like where you say fat is beautiful or not it's just because your body is not at its ideal weight um and um shape and you know uh and just efficiency in a sense, so you have an efficient size for your for yourself, and you maybe have never experienced that. I had never experienced that. Um, I always had eating disorders, so I was thin, but I was always my body was out of whack. You know, like you're small in some spots and a lot of fat in other spots. Like I always had 
a lot of fat on my belly, which drove me nuts. And I had um, fat on my underarms a lot, and um, and I had a chubby face because I did things like bulimia and anorexia and starve myself. So I would just it drive me nuts these certain things, you know. So I never felt because all oh, I would think I, I'm looking good, and then I get this photo and I'd have just the puffiest face because bulimia too, you get puffy, puffy face because you you're busting the capillaries. <laughs> uh, and you're, you know, when you're throwing up and you get this real puffy jowls. Anyways, um, so you just constantly are like, don't like it no matter how much. And that happens with a lot of people if they're dieting or something. So they're just constantly like, there's something that's just irking them. And oh, oh I, I just hate this about me. I hate this, this, and that. Well, now I am finally at a point where I'm like, I feel really comfortable with myself. I mean, there's a couple of things. Like, I have really crooked teeth, and everyone comments on that. I never, I, my parents weren't very rich, so they couldn't afford braces when I was growing up. And then as I got older, I just, um, it, I couldn't afford them myself. So, um, and then now, I was just recently thinking about getting them, and now look at what happened in the economy tanks. So, I don't know, put that on the list for later. Um, but we, we've actually spent a lot on dental work in just in the sense of repair, but not on cosmetic. It's been all on, um, you know, things like from cavities and stuff from we used to eat so much sugar, which we don't anymore. So now our, our teeth are actually repairing since we have not been eating sugar for many, for several years now. Um, but, uh, and that is one of the keys to actually getting to the size that you want is cutting out the sugar because everyone is highly addicted to sugar and caffeine right now. That's the other thing, the caffeine. The caffeine is the silent little killer there that's really creeping up the weight and no one wants to take that one out because everyone's so addicted to it. And it's so, and they're so addicted to the habit of it. Like people wake up and they want their cup of coffee. I was making like 10 pots of coffee a day right before we stopped kitty got gotten out of here <laughs> I, all i drank was coffee i didn't even drink water you know they say to drink water it was just coffee i don't even know how i'm like man the level of de dehydration was insane for me but um that's why people age more on caffeine too because it's also just dehydrating you all the time on top of storing fat and everything and producing insulin but, so, if you say, oh, what are you talking about with caffeine? Okay, I'll say it real quick. Cause, so, what happens with caffeine is caffeine, um, it, it tells your body, it's kind of like a, a suppressant and a de depressant. It numbs your senses. So, it kind of tells everything to chill, including your insulin hormone. Now, what happens when you chill, tell your insulin hormone to chill is then it stops producing so much insulin, so your blood sugar rises. When your blood sugar rises, then your body wants to produce more insulin. So then you start producing more insulin. Problem with insulin is insulin tells your body to store fat, and it also tells your body to go into like a hibernation dormant mode. So now every time you have a cup of coffee, you tell your body to store fat, and to not have energy to actually be tired and to rest. But why you think the caffeine works is because at first it numbs your senses so you don't feel as hungry and you don't feel as tired. But by then, by the end when the coffee wears off now, you are in so much more of a jam because now, now after you unnumbed all your senses, now all of your regular senses come back. Now you're even more hungry, even more tired, and now you have even more insulin production, so now you store more fat. So it's like actually one of the worst things we could do. And we didn't know this, or we did know it, and we didn't think about it or something, because that's just kind of science. I mean, so we knew it if we thought about it, but no one really thought about it. They are just kind of like, ah, it'd be fine, coffee for year after year after year. I thought it was fine. You know, that's a very good point. Most people are like, like our whole society is completely addicted to sugar and caffeine. Right. So, yeah. it's going to be the next fucking thing when they wake up and realize what's Right, and that's why we have a really big obesity problem. Because most people are, you know, the majority of people tend to try to watch what they eat. You know, they, there's some people that just go nuts and say, forget it. And those people are, you know, 700 pounds. So, I mean, there's really people that are, I, I, I've met some people in Vegas that are like 700 pounds. Um, and, um, 
that and that's very unfortunate you know because the, their life is not very fun at that it, you know it becomes very very difficult to do anything to walk they they get uh, knee problems like crazy feet problems joint all elder joints everything hurts young ages too you know in their 20s and everything and then they got a body as if they were in their 90s because of all the weight and um and it happens because people get addicted to sugar and 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 the reasons for and the, and the caffeine and those are the ones I was saying right. so most people are saying but so some people don't care and just say give up but other people try to tend to watch what they're but it's the caffeine that gets them because they don't realize that's the little one creeping in what were we going to say that's it that's it well, but that's the little silent killer because a lot of people are trying to go to the gym, trying to eat right, trying to, and then but then they're loading up on caffeine <coughs> all day, thinking caffeine's good for them. What were we gonna say? Oh, that was it. Okay, sorry. I just wanted to say that one point. point. Um, because I think that is the biggest one because most people are assuming caffeine is making them lose weight. I mean, they down it before the gym. And they go, oh, it's going to help me lose weight. But it's actually the opposite. So, and then the sugar and the artificial sugars. Those, I firmly believe the artificial sugars are worse than regular sugar. Because, here's the reason why I believe that. Because what happens when you eat sugar is your body produces insulin. And like I just said, insulin tells your body to store fat and to go into hibernation. That's the point of insulin is kind of like a bear hibernating. That's when a bear eats a bunch of you know, sugar and then they hibernate. They eat all that honey and they go into hibernation. Um, and so if you tell, if you start eating a bunch of sugar, your body thinks that you're wanting to store fat because it doesn't know why you're eating that much sugar. Well, okay. I guess you want to store a bunch of fat. We must be going into hibernation and we're not going to have food for a while. That's what it thinks when you eat sugar. Because in the past, we didn't have sugar. Sugar didn't even exist, really. I mean, you would have a little bit of fruit like you that you were able to maybe pick once in a while when it was in season. And you got some uh, sugar from veggies um, that you were able to pick and grow. But there's no sugar. How did you get sugar? You know, it wasn't sugar. And even um, one of the other ways we get sugar that people don't realize is from the milk. That's got a lot of sugar too, the lactose. So no dairy. Cut out dairy. Dairy out the window. You'll feel a lot better if you cut out dairy and gluten. We don't do dairy, gluten, no dairy, no gluten, no GMOs, no caffeine, no alcohol, no artificial anything. And we do all organics. Um, but here's the thing. Why the artificial sugars, I think, are worse. So your body produces insulin when you eat sugar. Now, people thought these artificial sugars would be fine because they don't have the calories. So, you know, like you do these Diet Cokes or these Stevias. Even Stevia. Stevia is not any better. They're all crappy. Because the problem is um, anything that's sweet that your brain thinks is sugar like if your brain says Ooh, that's really sweet your brain is going to produce insulin it doesn't matter if you gave it sugar or not your brain's going to say oh i got sugar i'm going to start producing insulin so even if it's artificial you're still going to produce the insulin and those artificial ones are generally really really sweet so your brain goes, oh, I got a lot of sugar. Whoa, produce a bunch of insulin because obviously we are going to hibernate for a while. So, but then it didn't even get any sugar. So now it's got all kinds of issues because now it thought it got all this. Uh, so now you have a major imbalance because now you're going to have too much insulin and not enough sugar. So it creates all these imbalances. So actually, that's why I don't know if you all have ever noticed, but people get you get headaches and stuff from the artificial stuff. You don't realize it because you probably have just had a headache for so long. But if you ever take it out and put it back in, you'll notice those ones right away. You just get like because it's it's not right. I was saying this the other day. You really should not eat anything that has an ingredient that you have to look up the definition. Like if it's not something that you just don't you don't if it's not like a food that you know the name of. Then don't eat it. 
if it's got anything you're eating and if there's any ingredient that has any kind of something, you know, one of them scientific words <laughs> that you don't know how to even pronounce, don't eat that food. All your ingredients you should understand should say things like organic beef, organic chicken, organic apple, organic black pepper, organic thyme. I mean, my ingredients just have the one ingredient, the things I have, organic rosemary. In the ingredients, like that's it. There's no, all these million words that I have no idea what they mean. Those are the ones that are problem. You don't, you want to avoid all that artificial stuff because your brain doesn't know what it is. So it just treats it as sugar. All that artificial stuff. It goes, what's, what's this? I don't know. You give me some crazy thing that tastes really good. So I'm just going to produce insulin because it apparently should be sugar because it's so tasty. So that's why we're having more obesity than ever is all. <laughs> we're getting more and more artificial stuff and more and more caffeine. Yeah. It's like it's like we're increasing the amount of caffeine and increasing the amount of artificial stuff. It's like more fake food and more caffeine and more obesity. And the thing is that what happens is when people are depressed, like, uh, for example, Dana Roselli just tweeted, hey, you know, with the strip empty and no one here, I'm driving down, I noticed there's a, something called the Hotel Shalimar that's been here forever. I've never seen that. I drove by every one day. That's what speed and... and that's what caffeine and sugar is like. Yeah, you go in auto mode. You, yeah, you, you just don't throw so fast. So then when you say, hey, man, do you want to check out this cool piece of, of music and art? You're like, uh, they're like, uh. That's why you don't want to look at new stuff. That's Back why, to what we're that's saying. Why music today sucks. So we'll when to you're addicted to caffeine and sugar and when you're overweight, like I said, when you're not feeling good, you don't want to see anything fresh, anything new. Everything new seems, I like the old stuff better. That's why you always hear, oh, it's better when I was younger. In all the good old days. Let's make America great again. Yeah, back when we were more racist, great. Jeez, I mean, that was the most ridiculous slogan. Like, oh, back to white supremacist time, right? All those guys came out. So, no, I'm not for Trump or the Dems. I don't like any of them. People have asked if I support Trump. I do not support Trump or the Democrats. I don't like any of them. I think all of our government officials are complete, complete, greedy Gumballs, like they had to just knock people out of the way, lie, cheat, do whatever to get to the positions, because that's what we require in this country to be a political uh, candidate. I mean, you well, have really to, anybody. you have to annihilate the other guy. people. You gotta beat up the other guys. You gotta call them names. You gotta say nasty things. You gotta write nasty stuff. Do fake news about your competitor. So all of these people, that's what they do during these campaigns. So you tell me these people are nice people. Look at what they do to the people to each other. And then they're friends at the end of the day. But look how they treat each other during the campaigns. And then you say these people care about us. They don't even care about their friend. They just went to their dinner party or wedding party. And then now they're calling each other all these nasty names and all this. And spreading each other's personal rumors all over the media for us to know every little tiny thing of their past and stuff. We don't need to know all that for them. You know what I mean? But they want to, yeah, I mean, you know, and that's how they live their life. Just to get into the position. And then we're supposed to... Say thank you, leader, for, like, kicking the other guy. Jeez Louise. For being the most vicious person. So that's who we elect is the most vicious competitor. Of them all. Of them all. The nastiest one becomes president. The nastiest one becomes governor. Our governor here, we just found out he uh, he actually has been in trouble for uh, his first wife came out that he beat her. And she felt like a prisoner. They got a divorce, and he uh, he does not allow the daughters to see her because he did not because she's telling the truth about him. So he got that all squashed. But that was in the uh, actual news and stuff. This was before he was governor. When he was some other whatever, he was probably lower lower position then, um, trying to work his way up the chain. And then he just married this lady like a couple years ago. 
right before he became governor. And now we're supposed to act like, oh, he's this nice family man, you know. He just picked up some chick along the way to get to the uh, <laughs> to the governor position. Hey, you'll do. Well, All he right. dated her for a while, but yeah. No, but I mean, he just got. I mean, the guy's been single forever, and then uh, uh, coincidentally, right before he's uh, going to become governor, which is always they like to have someone married. They don't like to have single people in office, if you've noticed. So, I mean, it was pretty convenient for her and for him to. Oh, a good time to get married now, right? Because we want a boost. I mean, all of the stuff, as you see, no matter. Maybe that was the time they got him, but I'm saying it definitely was encouraged you're not going to become governor if you don't get married kind of idea do you get what i'm saying they don't elect single men for governors very often of what i've ever noticed nor for president have we ever had a single president huh good question have we I'm i know we've had them cheat on their wives but it was everyone that was single before they went in there i don't think so I could be wrong, but I don't think so. So there's a lot of things that are like, yeah, they say, oh, coincidence, or oh, you don't know this, or oh, yeah, oh, yeah, uh, that's, uh, what do they call it, you know, these crazy theories, oh, you're just conspiracy theories. For one thing, two people meeting together and having a plan is a conspiracy. So it's not much to be a conspiracy. People act like conspiracy has to mean that... Um, like this crazy alien stuff or something right. that, yeah, you know. It has to be two people no, it's like two people illegal. meeting together and, and saying, let's do this it has plan. To be illegal, though. It has to be illegal. And usually illegal. Usually illegal, yeah. Usually illegal, but if it, it can't necessarily be illegal. It can be yeah, just kind of shifty. Shady, yeah. Shady. 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 It can be a lot. Most of the things are just kind of shady and not that's really. That's what business is when you talk mm -hmm. to people. You're and that makes shady. it, that's conspiring. Two yeah. people having a plan and be like, like let's kind of like edge out the competitor by doing this. That's conspiring. Right, so for those of you that go freak out about uh, conspiracy theories, well, shit. I mean, every company says makes a plan to probably edge out their competitors or get the edge up. If there's no, if they're the only one, then they're you know conspiring to how do we maybe trick the public to? Because sometimes you have to trick the public because sometimes they're stupid. <laughs> most of the time so a lot of times you know you have to kind of get them to see your product so that that's how it first started but now there's just a lot of the products are just complete shams but I think in the beginning a lot of the things they had to kind of trick people because people just don't want to pay attention you know but now people have really taken advantage and there's people know how to really scam so there's a lot of scams that exist and that's why everyone's so worried about fake news fake this because there is a lot of stuff out there but there's also a lot of truth out there and you can actually find out the truth because there's everything is out there where in the past we were only shown what was on the media and those guys are only going to show what their sponsors want them to show they will never show something that their sponsors don't allow or what their channel doesn't allow or what um uh, anyone that supports them uh, doesn't allow. So, like, if they are in support of a certain um, candidate, and they always are on the news channels. They always they're, they're either uh, they're always say they're unbiased, but one always leans one way or the other. Like, you'll figure it out if you watch the channels which way they lean by just the way they tell their stories. It's really easy figure out which ones. Like Fox News clearly leans Republican, CNN clearly leans Democratic. I mean, I think they even do their coloring, the one's red and the other one's blue, you know. And so it's not going to be unbiased when they're clearly favoring one party. Um, they're always going to have their news be swayed one way. And it can still be the truth. That's where people go, oh, you can still have it be the truth, but really twist it. To it goes completely different ways. For example, with this virus, we have a regular flu virus. A regular flu virus. And we're finding out now that in China, they had skewed all their numbers. The numbers are way less. So it was always just a regular flu virus. There was It was never an epidemic. All these numbers are coming out that they lied about their numbers. Right, Jenna Rich, what was the numbers that came out? Oh, gosh, you're just a... Uh... Yeah, they're just... Like, way them. lower, way lower. Like, they did... Yeah, now they're trying to build them up. They're probably... And um, yeah. so what's happening is they don't want to admit that we got basically punked out. We got punked. 
You remember that show you guys punked? Oh, right. We all got punked. We got punked by China and then by the Democrats here. And uh, the Democrats don't want to admit that because then we would... They'll look like assholes. They'll look like complete assholes because they knew. They knew. Because the reason why I know they knew is because they allowed things like construction to continue during a deadly virus. Really, construction is essential. Construction is essential when we're trying to not have a spread when four to five workers were testing positive at these construction sites. And it's a deadly virus, and we are so worried that we shut down all the casinos, all the hotels, all of everything in the whole country. But we allow construction. They knew all along it wasn't a deadly virus. All they did, you guys, is they took a regular flu virus, they tracked the numbers of a regular flu virus, and they just created the hysteria and showed you guys the numbers, which we have those numbers every year. We just don't normally track them to that level. But if we did the same thing, we'd have the same thing next year. We could have the exact same thing, and we could freak out like this, but hopefully we'll learn from this and never do this again. But we would have the exact same numbers. The same amount of people, the same amount of deaths, the same uh, grandmas (laughs) dying in the hospital that someone doesn't get to talk to. I'm so tired of that. I am so tired of that. I'm tired of people saying my 83-year-old grandmother died of COVID. That's the same we have every year. I'm sorry. I know people dying sucks. I lost a mother and a brother and and a bunch of grandparents. I only have one living grandparent, I think, uh... All of the rest of them are dead, and I'm I'm young. I'm my I've lost a lot of people in my family. They're they're just they're just dying like crazy in my family for some reason. So I got a lot of dead relatives. I know it sucks oh, losing it's people. Oh, of you. Someone says. Okay, great. Go fuck yourself. Anyways, um, uh, so here's the thing. This was not a deadly virus. A deadly virus would in, would be if you got the virus and you were healthy and you were just, everyone was just dropping like flies. And that is not what happened. People were recovering. The only people that were dying were the people that were very ill already. That is why I say go fuck yourself because those people would have died no matter what. It had nothing to do with this coronavirus. They would have died if they got the regular flu virus, which is what this was. They would have died if they got the common cold. That's what happens when these people are that ill, and those are the people that are dying from this virus. No one healthy is dying. People healthy are recovering, including Tom Hanks and his wife. We seem to forget. They're like in their 60s, and they got it, and they are fine, and they're singing rap songs now. And we're acting like this was a deadly virus. Deadly would imply when you are healthy this and you get says, it okay, this, and die. This that would mean deadly virus. This person says, oh, well, everyone's freaking out because... This virus has no cure, like the AIDS. No virus has a cure. You get antibodies. You, you get Viruses immune. don't have cures. Wait, you get the immune... To explain how it works. You get the you, what happens with the virus is they give you part of the virus, well, no, and that's how... And you get immune to it by getting the virus. So, like, what they do is they get a vaccine, and it's like every year they give you that flu the flu shot is they are injecting you with the virus so that you can get an immunity that's why people get sick when they get the flu shot because they're injecting you with the flu a weaker version of it. a weaker version so you can get used to it and create the antibodies in your own body and then you won't get it when it comes by well that's what they're doing right now so next year we'll get a coronavirus flu shot probably that's what they do that's what they do every like year every you guys shot. every year this, this is what shot. they do viruses don't have cures and also, they hand sanitizer don't stop viruses, you dumb shits. That's for bacteria. And now all you're doing is taking all the good bacteria off of your hands every time you're washing your hands a million times a day because you need bacteria. And when you use antibacterial soap all day long, you take off all the good bacteria. Now you make yourself more susceptible to actually get viruses. Because you, your good bacteria fights off diseases and viruses and things. It's part of your antibodies. When you take it all off your hands, when you're washing your hands a million times a day and hand sanitizer, which has all kinds of chemicals and things, that shit's nasty. And it dries out your hands. It's, just, it's the worst stuff. I had an Uber driver be so mad at me because I would not put that stuff on my hands. I said, I will not use that hand sanitizer. No, thank you. I will not put that nasty chemical shit on my hands. No, thank you. He said, excuse me? I said, no, thank you. I will not use hand sanitizer. I, I am clean. I am. I, if you want me to get out of your car, uh, that's fine. I'll get a different Uber, but I'm not putting that nasty chemical stuff on my hands. No, thank you. And we proceeded. <laughs> 
I didn't say it that rude to him, but I said, no, I, I, I would not put that on my hands. I don't use that stuff. Mm -mm. And I don't. I'm all about organics. I am not putting nasty chemical. Have you guys smelled that? No. Oh, my gosh. Oh, mm -mm. no. And you go, oh, oh, really? I am so healthy. Are you kidding me? If I got the virus, I know I would get over it. So I don't even worry. Are you kidding me? I mean, I get sick and we bounce right back from things because we are so healthy because we do weed all day long, which weed is a great antibody. We, we actually have um, cannabinoid receptors in our body, naturally. So we actually are feeling a little bit inadequate without weed. And it's unfortunate that they made it illegal all these years because it's from Earth. So your body actually feels very um, satisfied when it gets those receptors filled. And we didn't realize that. We're finding that out now because as they're learning more about weed, when it was illegal, they couldn't do as many studies now as it's becoming more legal. So they're actually learning so much about weed. And it's amazing. And it heals everything. And you don't have to know what's wrong with you. That's the beauty of it. You just take the weed and it heals everything. So you don't need to go to a doctor. That's why... A lot of doctors don't want weed. It'll put them out of business. The cool doctors switch over and become weed doctors. But a lot of these doctors will say, absolutely don't do weed. Which is the most ridiculous thing. If your doctor says not to do weed now, when they're finding out that there are so many, so many medical benefits, and if your doctor is still recommending you not to do weed, then I would reevaluate what kind of doctor you are going to see. Because that doctor is out of touch with reality. And he is teaching you old stuff that he learned like 30 years ago in a book. And this is 2020. And we have weed legal in over 30-something states. So if your doctor is still saying weed is an issue or not beneficial, you need to get a different doctor. Because there are medical doctors saying completely the opposite and they are doing brand new research, not research they learned 20, 30, 40 years ago when they went to medical school. They are cutting edge research. So if you're listening to a doctor that is regurgitating shit he learned 30 years ago in medical school, you are listening to the wrong person. I don't care how many years he's been a doctor and how many people he has healed and touched and oh la 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 and how many awards he has his shit is old because the new stuff is coming out and they're doing research and they are finding weed is so beneficial they're giving it kids with seizures they're giving them the cbds and if you don't want to get stoned we're talking about cbds cbds are the cannabinoids that is the the main healing part of weed it's all healing you have cannabinoids cbds you have the THC, that's the stony part of weed. And then you have the terpenes. That's also an essential oil. Those are your aromas. Those are your, the, uh, that's where you get the smells. The citrus, the lavender, the um, pine, uh, the, uh, what do we got? What, mint. You only have a couple. You have, you have over 200 terpenes, but you only have a couple of aromas, and then they all come together to make different ones. So you have citrus pine, um, uh, lavender, mint, and uh, did I forget one? But then what they do is they make all these different combinations. They get all these wonderful flavors that come from just those different ones. It's, 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 it's wonderful. You'll really, oh, as you, if you ever get into smoking weed, you'll enjoy the smell so much. We have this one right now. It's called a Purple Punch. It literally smells like, like grape punch. It's so so strong. It's the aroma is amazing, but that is even healing. Just smelling the weed, cause just getting the aromas. Like you know, aroma therapy came from weed. First they were doing it with weed, I'm sure, until they made it illegal, and then they kind of had to do take out the weed. But um, the weed is what you really want. That's the real healing component of most of this stuff. Um, but so you got your terpenes and the CBDs are what they extract and then when you do the CBDs all that is the healing part. You don't have any stony parts so they're giving it to children. They're finding that kids with seizures they're giving it to them and then they have no seizures and it's in a droplet form. It's like a tiny little droplet on your tongue. That's all. 
And that's what you give to kids. I like let medicine like they do with them, cough syrups, which cough syrup is a terrible idea. All that is is sugar, too. Those are just straight sugar, any of those cough syrups. You should never give those to your kids, that you're just giving them sugar. I don't know why. I don't know why. Uh, uh, I guess we got in this Mary Poppins thing of a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. Because yeah, that, that, that is a terrible idea. I don't know why we give sugar uh, in medicine. That is an absolutely horrific idea. Sugar is not helpful. Sugar is harmful and feeds all of the diseases and disorders and things. Like, I don't know why they ever thought that was a good idea. So that movie, that was a terrible idea. Um, you do not want sugar when you're sick. That's No, 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 no. You want the opposite. Cut out the sugar when you're sick. And you're probably sick because you probably are consuming too much sugar. But anyway, so back to the weed. So they do the CBDs. Oh, they say you're a Trump child now. I'm a what? A Trump child. A Trump? A child of Donald Trump. Why would that be? I don't fucking know. That's what I thought you said. I was just kind of like, okay, why? I was more saying... Pro-Trump, I guess. No, like I said, I'm not uh, pro-Trump or uh, pro-Democrat. I think they're all buffoons, and I don't vote. And I, I will not vote unless they completely change our system and allow actual candidates, not these buffoons, not these billionaire greedy assholes. So I, I was even in the military. I was in the Air Force for four years, and I did not vote. It was during uh, Bush, um, George W. Bush. And um, I didn't vote because I've never agreed with our system, and I've never voted. And I don't think any of these candidates have ever been good candidates. Um, I did like Obama. I was happy with Obama, but I didn't vote. Um, but... Um, he was just cool. <laughs> I just thought he was cool. He, he gave the best speeches and stuff. He was just a cool president uh, compared to these other guys. I don't know, but I'm I'm sure Obama did a bunch of crap too because they're all they're all friends. They're all billionaires. They're all so you know none of them are cool. But he just appeared to be cooler than the other ones so far. At least he was enjoyable to listen to. I used to actually like listening to him speak. I can't these other guys. I can't listen to man snooze fest. Um. But anyways, uh, so I'm not political, but right now I'm more political than I've ever been because right now this is a political stunt that's affecting our livelihood big time here in Vegas. So the mayor here has been trying to get Vegas back open because she keeps saying you cannot, these casinos are not going to survive. You cannot just have like, because it's like, even if you have whatever the amount of time, 30, 45 days, tack on another how many even months on that before the casinos can even start to re recover. So it's like <clears throat> every day it just gets worse and worse and worse for the casinos to ever be able to recover. They're already talking about only opening maybe like one or two casinos in the beginning. Some of them may never open again unless they get bought by someone else. But like the current owners won't be able to afford to open them. They'll have to sell them. Um, they have to change hands before they can reopen a lot of them and she's been but, and then they, they make her out to be like she's this crazy person that doesn't care about people's health for one thing this is a regular flu virus all the numbers are coming in if you guys are seeing they're like oh the numbers are oh, apparently lower than we expected uh, no the numbers are what a regular flu virus numbers are and that's what I've been saying the whole time they never were going to be higher the whole thing has been a hoax in the sense that there was a regular flu virus and all they did was track it and jump on it and create this mass hysteria so that they wanted to sabotage Trump. And that's why you guys might call me a Trump child or Trump supporter because I'm saying that the Dems are trying to sabotage Trump. Yes, that is true. I believe that Someone to be says true. The, ma the mayor is terrible. The mayor's not terrible. She's actually really cool here. Well, they're mad because she wants to open the casinos. That is a wonderful thing. You guys are nuts. See, it is not a deadly virus because Governor Sislik allowed construction to continue this entire time, and especially construction at the Raiders Stadium. Even when three to four workers tested positive, it's they go back and forth. How many? I think it's even more than that. But they already came out that it was three or four workers tested positive. They continued. They didn't even change course at all. They kind of have a little bit of a rule of try to keep six feet when you can and maybe put on a mask if you but feel you like see, it, if it's convenient. Like a, okay. Let me ask you a question. I mean, just seriously. If you didn't know any better, if you came down there and you said, you read the precautions they're taking for the most deadly virus. Yeah. 
They don't seem like precautions for And the me. guys are laughing. When we talk to the guys, we're like, oh, you worried about the virus? They're like, virus. I am the virus. Virus is a joke. I mean, they, it's, it's a joke to people that are still working because they know it's a joke. It's all of us that, like, see, the reason why people at home want to believe that it's true because otherwise you should be really, really angry. And that's why people are like, it's either right now be in denial or be really fucking mad. Because you should be really fucking mad. They just destroyed our society for no reason. For political reason. For political. But no real, not reason that they're saying. Not like for like a, a legit reason, like for like for our health or welfare. It was for political agendas. So, yeah, they destroyed society, I guess, for a reason, for political agendas. But I mean no, like, reason that was, like, valid for our help. That was because the Democrats want a Democratic president. And the reason why they want one this in this particular term, especially, is because there's a good chance one of those Supreme Court judges is going to die. And especially that one at Ginsburg. I think is her name. I never look up her name. And I think every day I'm like, is it Ginsburg? And then no one tells me or I, I never check again then every day I go I think her name Jared is her name Ginsburg yeah I think so okay yes he says I think so too so every day I go I think her name is Ginsburg anyway she's getting, she's very uh, old and she's been very sick I think she's had cancer and she's been in and out of remission you know throughout the years so they think oh here's some of our wonderful weed this is that purple punch I s spoke of oh if you guys could smell it through the scope it smells just like uh, punch. Like, see, a lot of times, sometimes the the name will be like what it is, but not always. But this one, we were like, we were trying to figure out, you know, we were like, oh, what is it? We're like, okay, yeah, it's exactly what it smells like. Purple punch. It's amazing. I love it. Thank you. So we have legal weed here in Las Vegas. I don't think fun. Mike Tyson actually grows weed. No, Mike Tyson just uh, is part of one of these dispensaries. He invested in it. He, he's funny. He invests in everything. He also invests in Bitcoin. We used to use his Bitcoin machine. Oh, used, yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, he just invests in stuff here in Vegas. He puts um, his name on things. Yeah, he puts his name on it. They just, like, license his name on stuff. But, yeah, I think he showed up one of the dispensaries in the beginning, you know, and kind of took photos and stuff. And then they said, oh, he's part of this one. But uh, that's, that's, you know, one of them kind of scams, too. They make you feel like... That person's really involved, but they just kind of license their stuff and get a photo with them. Um, but anyway, so um, so it was a political stunt because if a Republican becomes president in this next term, there's a good chance one of those um, judges is going to die. And what happens if one of those Supreme Court judges dies? Well, then a Republican will get to appoint the next Supreme Court judge, which will mean that Supreme Court will favor Republicans because it'll be someone that is Republican, someone in support of Republicans because that's who they're going to appoint. Usually they're f friends, you know. And then here's the issue with that. Right now, uh, the Congress is majority Republican. And if they get one more Supreme Court judge, then they'll be majority of the Supreme Court. So then anything that a Republican president wants could get approved like that because he'd have all the Congress support and all the Supreme Court support. Where if a Democratic president becomes president after this happens, like let's say we have a Republican, then when that Democrat's president, they could get nothing approved if the Supreme Court and the Congress is in Republican. So, so, like, they could get really screwed if it goes Republican, and then, then it could stay that way for a long time because you can't get another Supreme Court judge until another one dies. <laughs> and the Congress right now is in favor of the Republicans, so it could be really scary for the Dems. Like, they could, it could be a long time before Democrats could get any laws passed if another Republican uh, is in office in this next term. And so someone just said, hey, the Dems uh, won't pass Trump's appointments, but here's the thing. Right, so the Dems won't have, they're trying to do all this stuff at the top. Why? Because they want to carve up our lives. They want to yeah. control our lives. Mm -hmm. These 100, 200 people, 
they're all fighting for power to get decide. I mean, what it's ridiculous boss. that we even listen to them. Like, we should just be running our businesses. And say, Fuck I mean, I can't believe we're listening to these idiots. These idiots. That these guys have millions and billions of dollars, and now we all have nothing. People are losing everything. People are going to be homeless. We are behind on rent. Uh, most people in Vegas are not even paying rent. I've continued to try to pay rent because a lot of people are just hoping that they're going to figure out something in three months. But most people are going to be kicked to the street once this time runs out. You know where they say they can't kick you out right now, but they will. So I'm like been scrounging and try to at least pay a little bit so that when the times end, we're not like, hey, pay you know, thousands of dollars or you're on the street. And that's what most people are going to be. They're not thinking ahead. They're like, oh, we'll figure it out. I can't afford it now. And they're, you know, and they're taking advantage of this free rent thing where they're like, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll get the rent later. I'll use it for now. I'm like, we're instead being like, let's go hungry a minute and pay rent so that we're not in three months or whenever this thing is over, being kicked to the street with all of our stuff. Um, yeah, so we've been rationing where other people are like, oh, now I got this rent money. I'll go buy more supplies and crap. And, you know, um, and they're not thinking or they got their little stimulus check and they went and bought stuff instead of putting it towards the rent. People should have put that stimulus right towards the rent. But a lot of people are like, oh, score, we don't have to pay rent because they're just thinking that they'll deal with it when this is over but that's a really bad mentality because it can stack up so quick you'd be surprised how quick your bills in even a month two months of your bills are like way more than you thought do three months you'd be like good night do all your bills i mean the numbers become form become astronomical think of all your bills think of the whatever the number is let's say your bills are two thousand dollars a month that'd be low most people would have higher um you know in two months you're at Four thousand and three a month. You're at six thousand. You know, quick. You're just going up and up, and that's a low number. Let's say your uh, monthly expenses are at five thousand a month. In two months, you're at ten thousand now. If you just put your bills to the side, like a lot of people are doing, because they can't be evicted, you know, and they're thinking, "I'll just deal with it." But it becomes so big, and it'll become this huge mountain. And so we are like being like, "Okay, let's pay the bills and just." not eat basically you know and we have to do our weed because we tried to not do the weed but um I, we just get sick now because we're so it, uh, we're so used to it it's so healthy and beneficial and healing us so we we actually forgo food over weed now <laughs> um and you know honestly right now is a rationing time and it's funny people are probably gaining more weight we really it, during rationing time if anything you should be thinner than ever because there isn't a lot of food right now. There is a shortage of food and supplies. But it's funny, during this time, probably most people have gained weight because they're sitting around at home probably snacking more than they were being less active because at work they're probably, you know, so a lot of people probably packed on a lot of weight. We're seeing our neighbors are all looking heavier than they were since the beginning of this. We're seeing, you know, a lot of people are barely coming out, but when they pop out, you're like, oh, wow, they've put on a substantial amount of weight in the last, because this is, what, 38 days, so you can really pack on weight in 38 days, you know, and you can create pretty bad habits it only takes 30 days to really get a, a, a habit where you're just locked in. So you could have oh already God. created some really bad habits you know where you should have created some good habits during this but time. That's what you said the very first, right? At the very beginning, you said, hey, everyone should quit coffee. Right, quit coffee. But instead, most people probably didn't. And now it probably created some bad habits where now you literally are so lethargic, you just don't really do much. Where maybe even in the beginning, you were making videos. I saw a lot more art in the beginning. I'm not seeing that as much anymore. Right, everyone kind See, of gave up on that. A lot more hate than I. That's right. what we're no saying. One, it's like no motivation. People Everyone is hating. No one People wants. Worried. To. They're wanting to consume more, and they're all trying to sort out this conflicting information. Mm -hmm. And a lot more hate. That's what we're saying. Like it's like you don't get any support online. It's just everyone's so angry now. You know, it's like rah, hating on everything because people are getting depressed at you home. Know? I mean, this is and what what's happening is since you're not expressing your anger you're probably getting more and more depressed because you should be mad right now. The government neighbor, just neighbor hate, messed Neighbor with hate is, re is, is real right now, someone said. Neighbor hate? Neighbor. Oh, we're loving our neighbors. We're getting along really? great. Yeah, we, 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 we don't really hate our neighbors. No. Yeah, no, we actually had an incident with these guys a while back, and now they've been great because we set that straight. I set them straight. Man, you don't mess with Jedi Joy. They were... Okay, so when you live... We live in weeklies... 
And you have to have a sense of reality that it's not going to be quiet. You live in a weekly, like you hear your neighbors. They're not thick walls. So if someone's playing music, you hear it. We have a baby uh, next to our bedroom that cries all the time. We hear him all the time. That's just what you deal with. We lived in one weekly where the, the next door neighbors, they had five kids in a one bedroom. <laughs> like They put all five kids in one, one little right. bedroom. And then one of the kids was autistic, so she would bang her head against the wall and bang her whole body against the wall all day and night long. And we never complain. You just That's just what you deal with. We've been on how do people on top and below, all kinds of noise. You just deal with that because they're weeklies, you know. You, you can't. You, you're not living at these high uppity places that you're paying HOAs and everyone has to be quiet and follow the rules. It's not the case. People fight. You hear the neighbors and you go check out what's going on. Oh, another fight. Let's see. No one calls the cops on people. You don't do that around here. You just deal with it. So... We're, we're good neighbors, but every once in a while, you know, we do our music, but most of it comes through the headphones. People think, oh, they're your neighbors. No, it's all coming through the headphones. Like, they don't hear any of this stuff like when we do our songs. But one day, Jedi Rich was just playing some music in here, and they started just being real pains about it. And the music was so low, I couldn't even hear it was on. Like, I was in the kitchen, and I couldn't even hear it. And they started banging. They started doing this every day. Like, if he turned on just the music, just to listen to just himself, like, what? They start banging. I said, no, no. That's un- that's unacceptable in these places. You just have to be able to play music and things. You can't. So I went over there, and I just said, no, you can't. No, because especially it was, like, uh, it was noon, the middle of the day. There are times that you got to be quiet. Before 8 a.m. and after 10 p.m., those are quiet times. Middle of the day, you can play music if you live in an apartment. And we were playing it, like, literally at a level I could not even hear in the other room. They're banging on the walls. So I go over there, and then they just start yelling at me. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> okay. And tell her, you guys So I was like, that's what I'm like. So I just went off on the lady, and then um, she's... <laughs> And then uh, the guy comes out. She's got some kid living with her. I don't even know what they're I don't know if she's dating the guy or if it's her son. But it's, like, about half her age. And then there's, like, this old lady. So they all come out, and they're all and I'm, I'm like, no. I'm like, we are, we are going to listen to music in the middle of the day if we want to. We live here. We are allowed to listen to music, and you guys are just going to deal with that. I that's not acceptable for you to pound on the wall when we're listening to music. It's like that office space. I'm allowed to listen to music at a reasonable level between the hours. Have you guys ever seen that movie with Millen? I mean, so I was like, I was like, no, you cannot. This, we do not blur the music. We do not do that. Um, if you guys ever hear it loud, it's through our headphones. They can't hear that. Um, we never blur our music. So I, I informed them of that, and now they have never pounded on our wall again. <laughs> And sometimes you got to set that straight. And now um, we're fine. You know, we had our little altercation, but now we're all cool. You know, we kind of cordially talk a little bit. But the rest of the neighbors we get along with. Um, but some people will just allow their neighbors to encroach on them and be little ninny nannies. If you own your place, you own your place. And even if you rent, you still own that for that time. Like, even as a renter, you still have rights. They can't even kick you out, even if you've been renting for a certain amount of time. Even with these weeklies, we have renter rights since we've been here longer, even though it's a weekly. They can't kick us out. They'd have to go through all the regular evictions, and they have to go through the things to even come in. They have to give us notices to even enter our premises. It's no longer... In the beginning, you're kind of more like a hotel, if you say a weekly, but once you're here for, I think it's over a month, month or two, I forget the amount, than your regular residence, and you have rights you have rights if you have a landlord he cannot just come into your house without permission i know people that rent from that these landlords come over without announcing you have rights as tenants as owners um and your neighbors do not have the right to say if you can make noise or not when you own it now there are hours that you can't make noise legally 
and that is before 8 a.m. and after 10 p.m. Any other time, you are allowed to make noise outside. You are allowed to play music. You are allowed to dance. You are allowed to have your kids play in the streets. You are allowed to laugh. You are allowed to talk. You are allowed to make noise outside or in your house between the hours of 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. as a human being, at least in America. I don't know about other countries. Um, And that is still legal even with this quarantine thing. Uh, Some states have made some stupid curfew things, but the majority of them, you are still allowed to go outside. You are still allowed to live. People, your neighbors will say, what are you doing outside? But who gives a shit? Tell them to go fuck themselves. Because you are allowed to live. And when any neighbor or landlord or something thinks they have a right to say you cannot live. Now, there are things that you can't do. Yes, and especially if you're renting. And there are rights and you should read about them. But there are things that your landlord is not allowed to do that a lot of them do. I've had I've rented from places that they just came in anytime they wanted. They had a key. You wouldn't even know. You'd be like, why does my stuff move? Oh, your landlord just popped in. And I mean, geez, Louise, just because they own the place does not mean they have a right once you live in there. There are rights as that is now your, uh, uh, what do they call that? Uh, domicile, is that the word? Domicile? I don't know, there's a word where that's like, they cannot come in there anymore because that is your belongings now in there. They don't have a right. There are privacy rights. They cannot just, that's what like, I mean, cops have to come and they have to get warrants. So your uh, landlord can't just be coming in. They have to give you like, usually it's like a, a certain amount of notice before they can ever enter. They have to, they cannot just pop in um, with no notice and uh, without, without your permission. They have to get, they have to give you like a written notice. They do that here. They'll say, I forget what it is. You know, I think some of them are like a, a 24 hour, depending on, you know, some of them, but at least let you know they're coming by because you have rights. So just remember that, especially during this time. You also have some rights, now some additional ones where I guess they're saying you can't come out, but some landlords are doing things like removing people's appliances, I've heard. They say, okay, you won't leave. We'll take out all your appliances, including your refrigerator, oven, and everything. They took out all their appliances because they wouldn't pay rent during this time, even though they weren't allowed to evict them. You know, so... There's some crazy things out there, but you do have rights, so remember that. Um, and it's it's hard to exercise those rights. People don't like it. But legally, there are things that uh, they cannot like it, but take it to the authorities, you know, if it comes down to it. Because so the problem is our authorities are also addicted to caffeine and sugar, and they don't feel like fucking doing any investigative work either. Yeah. I mean, really, unless it's laid out for them, man, they don't want to dig further than they have to. So that's why corruption has been allowed to mm-hmm. flourish. In our yeah, society. everyone was happening is, see, this is why uh, fat is becoming an issue, because it's not about uh, how it looks. What's happening is as people are gaining weight, they're becoming less healthy, which it, we have that whole insulin production thing, remember we're talking about? So day after day, all their body wants to do is go into rest mode. So they just don't feel like doing things. They don't feel like writing tickets. They don't feel like investigating. They don't feel like no one feels like doing anything. No one feels like uh, they, make they just want to do their job so and get home and sleep. sleep or eat or whatever. Spend time with the family, whatever the thing is, or do their hobby or whatever that gets their rocks off. But they don't want to sit here and do their nonsense job for the most part. Right. And you know what happens is, see, it's a, it's a mental thing. Mm-hmm. People get trained, and, and it goes back to what you're talking about before with Dana Roselli passing by things that you see every day. You train yourself to, to, like, to get to your goal. Yeah, you go in auto So mode. what you do is you check out during the time. And if you do that long enough, by the time you're 40, you're checked out so long, your family is like, yeah, care. people are in auto mode so much, uh, and, and that's why people don't like change, because change uh, makes gets you out of auto mode, and that's uncomfortable. Because auto mode, it feels safe, like because you're just like, oh, I know how to do this, and it's predictable, and I, you know, I can I can get by. But the problem with uh, safe, eventually, <laughs> this is the trick. Okay, your brain likes to be safe. It wants to go for the safest route, so it likes predictable. That would be safe. But the crazy thing about predictable and no change is it eventually becomes unsafe because you eventually get depressed. 
which then depression leads to weight gain and things like suicide and just diseases and disorders because you're you know getting more and more What's unhealthy. What's auto mode? Auto mode is when you just kind of do the same thing every day to where sometimes you don't even know, like you ended up driving home and you don't even remember that you drove home because you're like, how did I get home? Like, not like you're drunk or anything, but that drunk, people, some people are drunk, but like you just were like, geez, I was just not even paying attention because I just know how to do that so often or at work. You just know how to do the function that you do that you just check out. That would be auto mode. If you don't have to think about what you're doing, if you're able to do the thing so much that you've done it so much that you could just think about something else, that would be auto mode. If you're not in the moment of the thing you're doing, if like that thing is just the afterthought, you're thinking about something else and you just, you know, that'd be auto mode. So what you want to do is you want to always be in the moment of whatever you're doing. Like you want to be, if you're working, be in the moment of your work. Don't be checked out be doing what you're doing but people want things they can check out because they like that they like to check out because they think they like that but that's why we have people that are, see there's this funny thing where like you'll think you want something but at the end of the day that thing will make you depressed and that's what uh, happens with the brain the brain thinks it wants no change thinks it wants everything the same but no change leads to depression so it's just like this catch point so you have to continually kind of force yourself to be like no I'm going to do something different whether I want to or not because your brain will want to keep doing the same routine it wants it's to wake lazy. up at the same time so it wants to, lazy. it's lazy yeah so you gotta fo- and this is that thing where people say tricking their brain it's not tricking your brain it's more motivating your brain motivate yourself to do the thing it's not tricking people say trick your brain don't trick your brain tricking no. your brain is not cool because your brain doesn't like that and it I figures it out because guess what you are part of your brain so you can't really trick your brain so when you say things like I'm gonna trick my brain by doing this weird diet or something and then well, your brain knows what you're doing so you're not and also, when, like I said, whenever it's artificial stuff, it's just going to treat it as sugar and produce insulin. So you're not, your brain's like, okay, I don't know what that is, so I'm going to produce insulin. And then you're going to store fat. So there you go. Good job tricking me. That's why those fad diets only work in the beginning. And then eventually your brain just starts producing more and more insulin. It's like, all right, whatever. You do your thing, but I'm just going to produce more insulin. That's why you're going to get fat, and that's why you plateau and can't and usually gain all the weight back. Um but what you want to do is motivate your brain because your brain is very lazy. It wants to do the same routine because that's safe. It thinks. It thinks, oh, I know how to do this, so it's safer because I, I, it's not a wobbly thing. It's something that I, is predictable. It's I've walked this path before. It's not uh, I know which way to turn. I know, you know what I mean? I could do it in my sleep and in the dark. The brain thinks it wants that. But day in and day out, the brain gets depressed if it does the same thing. And you have to keep changing. But the one thing you don't have to change, funny enough, is your food. Your food should stay the same. And that's where we got this misconception. Because we think we need to change up. And it's so funny, so we change our food every day. Which is the one thing that should stay consistent. Your food should be consistent. We eat the same thing every day, every meal. Me and Jairich. And then your brain is so efficient. That's the one thing it it really likes to keep the same because then it knows what to do. It it processes everything right. It doesn't go, what is this? Let me produce insulin. Like it's so it doesn't have this constant up and down of your blood sugar up and down, up and down. It actually goes great. And then you can become super efficient because it really just needs food for fuel. We got this misconception that food was supposed to be this celebration <laughs> that it's life that it's all about eating, getting together. Food is actually just supposed to be for fuel. So when you give it fuel, it doesn't need to be fancy and pretty and different decorative things every different day. That's all sugar. Anything pretty and fancy and decorative, it it usually requires sugar. Any colorings and stuff, besides your regular colors that you would get from regular food. If you're thinking of, you could get beautiful colors in fruit and veggies when they're organic, but I'm saying the pretty colors the frosting and kind of things that you'll see any of decorative things and glazes and sauces and things all those um are things that your brain uh is just gonna <laughs> treat as sugar to anything that's like it doesn't know to anything sugary it's just so uh, we're what we do is we think that we make these things like we have these shows where they make these beautiful things and it's all about the look of the food and i'm like what it should be about is what 
the content of the food, the nutrition, it should be like, they should have shows about how to make an amazing organic fully nutritious meal and you think we have those shows but those are not true i've never heard them say what i'm saying what they say is oh uh, have your breads and your and your uh, greens and your meats and your you know have this well-balanced meal that's all i've ever heard which is complete nonsense Mm -hmm. what you need to eat is a ton a ton of protein and from real animals i know it sucks because everyone you know wants to be vegan now um and the way you can feel better about th- that it is by choosing organics because that's cruelty-free, no hormones, no steroids, no antibiotics, pasture raised, all these options you can choose now. Um, then you know the animals are treated fairly, but then also those things also now you are consuming. Here's the problem. The one thing vegans have right about the animal treatment is when those animals are treated poorly, you are consuming all that. And not in the sense of they say the death and they say all oh, this, you, you're consuming torture. And so it's not like that. What you're consuming is all of the bad food they gave them, all of the antibiotics, all of the steroids, all of the hormones, all of the pesticides that, you know, when they were, you're consuming everything that that animal was given. And now, you now consume it. So that's why we have people getting larger, not even just in a fat sense, but in a, in a muscle and bone density sense, because they're actually consuming all those antibiotics and steroids that the animals were consuming. And same with the fruits and veggies. So don't think as a vegan, you're avoiding that. You're getting it from the fruits and veggies if you're not doing organics, because they give steroids and hormones and everything and colorings now to the fruits and veggies because they want them to be these pretty colors and they want them to stay fresh a certain amount of time and stuff. Organics go bad quicker because they're real food. So the um, conventional food lasts a long time because it's not real food. And uh, good rule of thumb, if you have anything that can last on your shelf, um, then I wouldn't consume it. (laughs) The food we eat goes bad within uh, about two days. Anything that we consume... Um, unless unless we got frozen beef, unless it's frozen. But I mean, if it were to be something that, you know, uh, if you had it sit out or not even sit out, but in the fridge, you know, after it had been opened, it, it would be only good for about two days, anything that we have. Um, and that's a good rule of thumb because anything more than that means that they had to do something to keep that, to preserve it. And... Um, which would make it not real food anymore. They're adding something uh, to make it last longer, um, you know, stay fresher or whatever. So um, what we do is we eat real food. And what real food is organics. People get confused. They think organics is vegan or vegetarian. It's absolutely not. You can be a vegan or a vegetarian and eat organics, but organics has nothing to do with being vegan or vegetarian. Organics has to do with eating food from Earth. So it's food that doesn't have pesticides, doesn't have hormones, doesn't have steroids, doesn't have G- GMOs, which are genetically modified organisms. It's food the way it used to be before they started putting it in a lab and messing with the food, as I like to say. So it's food from nature, truly from nature. Now, we don't really have even food truly from nature anymore because they have messed with all the food to some level. So we get the best we can get, and that's organics. But they they keep still kind of messing with things, and it's just so frustrating because the organics get like less and less organic every year. It's crazy because they just... Um, are constantly kind of well now that we're being more aware i hope that stops but for a while it was like where they were still kind of just doing so many little ways of like for example corn even though it says organic is no longer organic because they kept modifying the seed that they no longer have a regular corn seed because now like they saved the seeds for the, now when they're realizing that's an issue because that was so many years ago for some of these things so like you can't get a regular corn seed that's not genetically modified. So I avoid corn, even if it says organic. But corn also has no nutritional value. So I don't know why people eat corn. It's, it really it's It's no benefit to you whatsoever. It's just straight weight gain <laughs> um, with no benefits. Um, so it's eating food from this earth. And... 
eating the same food every day is actually a, the one thing that you should do. So there's a couple of things, well, not just one thing, there's a couple of things that you should do every day. That is drink water, because we're made up of 80% water. Consume food, but not too much. Right now, we're all consuming too much. And I would say smoke weed. <laughs> that would be the other thing, but... You know, not everyone's going to do that, but I honestly think everyone would feel better if they did. I think we'd have a lot happier society. And people just have this vision of weed that you do it and you just get stoned and you laugh at yourself. Yes, you do do that sometimes. And that's actually awesome when you do that. That You should be thankful because that doesn't happen as you do it later. That's more in the beginning. Um, as you get more used to it, you hope you'd have those times that you just would laugh. It more becomes a healing thing. It's something you need for because you realize how every day it heals you. And every day you get healthy because most of us for years have been so unhealthy, including me. I was bulimic for 15 years, and I had eating disorders even before my bulimia. I started eating disorders from the age of like six or seven because my mom was very weight conscious. And then when my dad left, I got all you know messed up in the head about that stuff, and I thought I needed to be super skinny, so I started at a very young age. And my mom started giving me coffee when I was five, so I started the caffeine really young. But... um I quit caffeine in uh, 2018. Um, my birthday, 2018, was the last time I had caffeine. We had, we were just having tea at that point too, because we'd already cut out the coffee and then we'd switch to tea. Tea's not any better, um, and not even caffeine free. Caffeine free still has caffeine. It's weird. I don't know why they call it caffeine free, but it still has caffeine. It just has very small amounts of caffeine, but it still has caffeine. And if you cut out caffeine and you then you have caffeine-free tea, you will notice it has caffeine. Like if you've actually cut it out, you're like, oh yeah, there's caffeine in there. But you don't notice it when you are drinking caffeine because it's such a small amount. Same with um, decaf coffee actually has a small amount of caffeine. Um, I used to laugh because I worked at a coffee shop and people would always ask for decaf coffee and they'd say, some people say, oh, I'm allergic. I'm like, oh, really? You're allergic to caffeine? Well, that's, you shouldn't be drinking decaf coffee then, but you're like, okay. Uh, they didn't realize they're obviously not allergic to caffeine, but they probably just didn't like caffeine. They should have just avoided it, but they thought they were with decaf, but they weren't fully. <laughs> it just was less. They were just getting less of it, so they didn't notice. But um, anyway, so that what you want to do is keep your food consistent and your water consistent, but your life you want to change up, like do different things every day. Otherwise, you'll get bored. And you can, can be the same things, but just a little different. It's not like you have to go do something. It's just like, don't have your routine be exactly the same. Don't have it be that you, you wake up at the exact same time where you fold your t uh, shirts the same, where you brush your teeth the same. Where you, I mean, just change it up where you do your hair the same, where you do your makeup the same, where you um, work out at the same time, where you just change up your day a little bit. But keep your food consistent. It's funny, we want to change up our food and then keep our life consistent. It's like, no, keep your food and water consistent. Change up what you're doing. Make those a little different. Wake up at a different time. Eat, eat your food at a different time. I mean, that's a crazy one. People are so into, I eat at 8 a.m., noon, and 5 p.m., or whatever your times are, you know? Those would be the traditional ones. But some people have very varying ones. But traditionally, we as a side would say 8 a.m. for breakfast, noon for lunch, 5 p.m. for dinner, or whatever, you know, around there. Um, but totally change it up, you know? Eat it at different times. Um, eat when you're hungry. How about that? People will eat when it's time to eat instead of when they're actually hungry that's the other thing very rarely do we eat when we're hungry now people think they're hungry because they're addicted to sugar so they think they're always hungry but are you truly hungry like did you actually go a while without eating did you actually like even give your body a chance to really feel hunger and we very rarely do that that's where people get on this fasting thing I don't recommend fasting but I do recommend giving yourself enough time to where you feel hungry again before you eat Often we'll eat because it's time to eat instead of if we're actually hungry. It's like, oh, it's lunchtime, so I'm going to cook now. I do that even a lot still. But we, you know, we we, we only do our three meals, so it doesn't really matter too much because it's like, what will happen if I cook at, like, 
uh, those exact times, then we might end up being a longer time before, um, or like sometimes I'll, I'll cook earlier. Like sometimes I'll cook our meals closer together, like all three of them closer. But then I don't do another one. So then we go like a really long period before the next one. <laughs> but I was like, yeah, whatever. Uh, but it, it's better actually if I spread them out a little, but it just kind of depends. Because uh, we don't, we just go, like if we're out and about, we don't eat. We So uh, sometimes we'll be out and about so we'll miss lunch come home at dinner time then we're extra hungry so we do like back-to-back meals <laughs> because we because we um our diet's pretty set where we do need those three meals of fur because we're on a pretty lean diet that we um it's tough for us to skip meals we get pretty hungry because we just do um organic beef organic greens and organic garlic and then water sparkling water i love my sparkling waters Um, But so if we miss a meal, we get pretty hungry because um, we run so lean. But um, not too bad. Not the kind of hunger that you experience with sugar. Oh, I'm starving. Just kind of like, yeah, I'm getting kind of hungry. You actually feel your stomach growl. Uh, Most people, it's been probably a while since you heard your stomach growl. I remember when I was a kid, I would hear my stomach growl. And then um, when I was bulimic, I never hurt my stomach growl I don't think uh really and well in the very beginning but not later on because I was just constantly always eating always putting something in there and then throwing up um so it was like all day long um I I even though I was throwing it up like I was still attaching on to things that's what some people don't realize with bulimia and if you're not doing bulimic bulimia this might be applying to just a regular thing, whether you're starving yourself. A lot of people, what they do, if, if, if bulimia doesn't relate to you, you go, I'm not bulimic. I mean, she talks about that. What you need to do is relate it to uh, your thing. And what that would be was a lot of people, what they do is they starve themselves during the day, just drink coffee or something, and then they kind of binge at night or they allow themselves to eat at night. And they maybe don't throw it up, but they're still doing that kind of like cyclical of like um, this uh, binging and starving mode. And that's what you want to avoid. But like I said, it's okay to go a little bit, give yourself time to be hungry, but you don't want to do that starving, binging thing. And that's where the fasting thing, people get it. I I don't tend to like the fasting because what people tend to do when they fast is they starve themselves. They're so hungry. And then when it's finally time to eat, they just gourd themselves. And whether they throw up or not, they still gourd themselves and they might digest it. But it's like... It's still not good. You don't want to be... Um, for one thing, it's always better to eat small amounts for your digestion. It's never good to... Just Im- imagine your body as, you know, like something that, like, you... In a sense, uh, would you do that even to your toilet? You know, you wouldn't just keep jamming stuff in there. You know what I mean? Because you see, okay, it needs to you know, funnel into there, you know, you got to flush it or something. People want to do that. And that's your toilet, you know, if you where people want to do that's their body, they want to just keep putting food in there and not even drinking a beverage half the time. Or if they're drinking a beverage, they're drinking the sugary ones, which is more just sugar and more food. And then they don't even want to take a breath. And then just imagine all of that, whatever that was, your body now has to try to digest that. And especially when it's things that are really gluey and peanut buttery and sticky and all trying to go in your intestines. Our intestines are just little, like, tubes, you know? And then we wonder why we have all these gastrointestinal issues and these um, acid reflux and things. Well, you try to just cram all that stuff in your... In your mouth, and it's like a small, these are small, all of your glands, Um, you know, this is small things, and you you see people barely chewing, they're swallowing whole, I did that when I was bulimic, that's why I know, I mean, bulimic, it's like you can't get the food in your mouth quick enough, it's this weird thing, it just becomes this obsession, where you're just, it's like, you just eat so fast, so fast, I don't know why. Um, and you'll see that with people that are uh, very obese, and you'll see that with bleeding. Just eat so fast, so fast. And just imagine all of that stuff trying to go into your system. I mean, be nice to your body. Jeez Louise. Be nice to yourself. Give yourself good food. Give, give yourself time to digest. Eat like, a, like someone that cares about your actual body. It's weird we... 
we treat our own bodies so bad so bad we think that we're just like these human garbage cans dousing ourselves with alcohol and then getting sick and throwing up dousing ourselves with sugar dousing ourselves with energy drinks and coffee and cigarettes and steroids some people are taking steroids themselves when they're getting them you get them from the food and they're taking them themselves all these things just out, just sugary beverages juices smoothies protein shakes and uh, you know Cookies, potato chips, breads, gluten, all day long, just sticking it in your body. And and then we're like, oh, how come here you don't want to lose weight for me now when I go to the gym? Jeez Louise. I mean, it's your body. If you care about anything, care about your own body because you can't care about anything till you care about your own body. So people go, I want to care about my kids or something. You can't care about your kids till you care about your own body. That's the sad thing. That's why you're not going to be the best parent until you're caring about your own health, unfortunately. Because if you can't care about your health, you're not going to teach your kids how to care about their health. So you're not giving your kids the proper tools to be efficient adults and have healthy lives. You're teaching them the same bad habits you're doing. That's why kids, we're seeing more more obesity with kids and more suicide with kids. Because when a kid feels insecure because they're heavier, kids making fun of them, they want to kill themselves. I wanted to kill myself when I was a kid. I did try. Um, so when I was five, my mom tried. We, were, Me and my mom were going to kill ourselves. I have a weird childhood. Um, <laughs> So that was my first experience, but she didn't end up doing it. She got the pills already, and we, she talked herself out of it anyways. So we didn't do it. I have all this memory. So then I became very obsessed with death. So I wanted to kill myself a bunch of times growing up. I would often say I wanted to kill myself, and then my first attempt to try to kill myself was when I was 17. Um, and then I tried two more times after my mom died. Um, but my mom killed herself when I was 20, and she succeeded. I always tried the pills, and it, um, I would end up passing out and then vomiting them in my sleep and waking up and living. Um, but my mom shot herself in the heart. Uh, when I was 20, I was in the Air Force. And so I, uh, I struggled with insecurity was my biggest thing of why I wanted to kill myself, just because I just didn't feel that I liked the way I looked, that I liked my body. I, I felt insecure. And that was enough for me to want to kill myself. And it's so crazy now when I think, and that's how, for these kids. Because I was thinking, like, now, you know, I realize, oh, my gosh, that's extreme. But as a child, you don't. And, you know, at 17 and at 20, and my last suicide attempt was at uh, 22 years old. That was when uh, my brother had just died. Um, and I got a DUI. So my brother, my mom died when I was 20 from suicide. Then my brother died when I was 22 from a motorcycle accident. And then I was a mess. So I got a DUI the month after my brother died. And then pretty soon after that, I tried to kill myself because things were just getting worse and worse and worse. And then the suicide didn't work. And so then I had a, my dad made me go to the hospital to make sure I didn't get any other kind of thing. So then I had a $4,000 medical bill because I didn't have insurance. So I was like, this just got worse. I remember waking up. I, I was not happy to wake up. I was not happy to wake up from trying to commit suicide. Like, I did not want to wake up. And then uh, my phone was all lit up because I had told people I was going to kill myself. And then everyone, oh, it was just a mess. It was a mess. And it's unfortunate I was only 22 years old. So I thought my world was over, you know, for things that had occurred. And it was pretty tragic. I mean, losing a mother to suicide and a brother to a motorcycle accident, but some people's are not as tragic. But I tried to kill myself even before then, uh, just from things like not feeling good about myself. So as I said, when I was 17, that one wasn't even... That was before my mom. So um, people struggle with this, and weight is a big thing. People just don't feel good when they're heavy. They just don't. They just want to be thinner because it's it's the way we're supposed to be. That's why at the end of the day you don't feel good heavy because you have a desire to be the weight that you know you're supposed to be. 
It's just, then, like I said, everyone has a different side. Everyone has, this is the one thing people want to have someone else's body. You unfortunately can't have that. But you do have a body that exists that's really hot, I guarantee. Everyone has a hot body. Everyone does. It's underneath all that fat. Everyone does. Everyone is different, but everyone has. Because the human body is beautiful in its regular form. Like, that's where you see statues or a human body. And they're beautiful. Um, you'll see, like, you know, at Caesars, when it's open, there's a statue of, um, you know, the, of uh, several of the different guys there. You know, and they'll have the nude ones. Um, is Caesar and some of the different guys. And... Um, it's 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 a beautiful statue because it's just a human body. It's it's a man and it's showing his muscle tone and stuff. And humans are very attractive in their natural form. Like everyone is, whether you be short, whether you be tall, whether you have short arms, long legs, short you know whatever, whether it be this, your human body is beautiful. But weight can start to make you not seem as attractive and especially not as attractive to yourself and ultimately that's who it matters to so it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks about you it doesn't matter if other people say you look great or don't look great if it's how you feel and until you feel good you're never going to like what anyone else is doing or appreciate what anyone else is doing. You're going to be negative because you don't feel good. So the more you don't like your own body than anyone that is doing something cool or looking good, you're going to feel jealous. And that's where the jealousy arises. Whether you say, I'm not jealous. I don't want your life. I don't want this or that. Or who are you? Or oh, this is But you're jealous if someone is happy because ultimately you're not feeling happy because you're feeling tired, you're feeling depressed, you're feeling sluggish, you feel not motivated because you're causing added weight. And also the added weight just puts added pressure on all of your organs and it makes it hard. So like think of your weight as if it was if you were to take weights and put them on your ankles, you know what I mean? So think of the amount of weight you want to lose. Some people... It's 50 pounds. Jedi Rich lost 125 pounds. If you guys think he looks good, he lost 125 pounds or more now. That was when we that was when we stopped weighing him. I don't know what is because he's lost weight since then. But when we stopped weighing him, he had lost 125 pounds when we switched to organics and did the things I said, cut out the gluten, cut out gluten, dairy, GMOs, anything artificial, caffeine, sugar, all these things. The things people don't want alcohol undo all organics um he lost 125 pounds so let's say 100 pounds is the weight you want off okay that's a good number for a lot of people they're like they can't even dream that they could lose that but you can't and pretty easily if you start yeah they'll just start it'll start coming off now it doesn't happen overnight in the sense of people want tomorrow to, no 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 it'll take a good year or two you know to really get that off but you'll each day feel better, and each day it'll start coming off, and you know what I mean? But it's not tomorrow you're not going to be 100 pounds less. Jet Richard took him a good, well, it's been about two years, yeah, two years probably, um, to get to the weight he's at now. You know, just kind of, you know, because it just, each thing we kind of did in processes, you know, we took out each thing at a time. But here's the thing. So let's take that weight, let's say 100 pounds, let's say it's 50 pounds. Imagine that weight, um, on, like, just as if you were to either carry it or put it in the ankle bracelets. You know how they have those things? We have some over here. I was, I was wearing them when I was back trying to lose weight. You put these little five-pound things on your ankles. Imagine all that weight just if you were to just put it on your back, if you had to carry that around. Would you want to do that on a daily basis? If someone said, just carry around another 100 pounds, carry this to work, put it on your back, put it on your ankles, put it, you'd be like, no, 100 pounds? No, that's a lot. Well, that's what's happening if you're over that weight on your body. You're putting all that extra weight. So not only are you every day, you know, producing more and telling your body to start fat and to be tired, but just the added weight alone is going to tire you because it's, added weight it'd be like putting a backpack of 100 pounds on your back every day and working that's what you're doing when you have the added weight so it's that's why it's it's very important um for your health and it also puts the the fat uh 
it puts it on your organs, unfortunately. So the added fat starts to put pressure on all of your organs because you're just getting fat everywhere. So all of your organs now are getting squished together and that's not good. That's why people start having more heart problems because their heart can't beat because there's literally just fat just starting to cloud around all of the organs because it'd be like, you know, like when you eat too much and everything is like, uh, well, that's what's happening with all of your body. Everything is getting kind of squished around because there's so much fat and it's trying to make room for the other stuff. And that's why things are starting to hurt more, your joints. And, and, and then you just add on top of it the added weight. So you're walking around with them extra pounds, putting all that added weight on your feet, your knees, swipe your back, all of these things, um, including the boobs. A lot of women have uh, what I call fat boobs, uh, which all boobs are fat. That's what boobs are. It is fat. But what happens as as they get as they gain weight, they get really big boobs. But they're these really fat boobs that are kind of uncomfortable for a woman because they're just kind of awkward and they're real heavy because they're just they're not like the boobs that that woman would have normally had. They're just these added kind of awkward ones. And then women have to get reductions and stuff. And that happens. I have a I have a cousin that has her boobs are not um, a, a size. They're a size that doesn't exist. So her and her mother have to get special made. It's a I I it's a, I don't even remember. They get special custom. They're the, the largest. The largest, but I did not get that part of the family genetics, I guess, or it's from her mom's side, because my aunt's not, she's uh, my mom's brother's child, but so large, so large, um, and um, it gives her back pain, and it's it's not a, a thing that she likes, you know, some people think, oh, I mean, and these are natural, I mean, and they're, they're huge, and um, uh her and her mother both have, have looked into getting breast reductions because it's just, um, and, and they both also are pretty heavy, so it doesn't help. They have extra fat in their boobs as well, but they're they are large even when they're small. They're <laughs> huge boobs. It's insane. But, um, and what happens is, your body is made for a certain size, even be your boob size. So as you add on that weight, if your boobs are getting bigger, where some girls go, oh, great, I like that. But that's added weight, which is putting on your back, which was only made for whatever size you were supposed to be. And if some girls don't like losing weight because they do, their boobs start to shrink. And they do, because uh, there probably a lot of it was what I said, the fat boobs. Some of that was just real, real added fat, not really like your natural boobs. Because you have your kind of natural boobs, and then you kind of have all that added fat, is what I'm saying. Um, and they might shrink a little bit, and some guys don't like that. But uh, if it if it makes you feel better, see, that's kind of the trade-up. A lot of times when you're thinner, you're going to have things like smaller boobs for girls. But I, I just say forget it. I don't need big boobs. I'd rather be... Thin. Now, some girls are able to be thin and have huge boobs, and those girls are what we call fortunate. But <laughs> I knew a girl in high school. She was size one, uh, sometimes size zero, I think. And she was like double D in high school. It was the craziest thing. She was the most popular girl in high school. Yeah. Um, but uh, anyways, um, but yeah, a lot of people, uh, guys will worry that they'll lose their muscle. That's the other thing when they go, oh, well, you know, I go to the gym and I, I book up. Well, what you'll find is um, a lot of that, what you think is muscle is fat as well. So you'll see guys being really bulky where they do have muscle, but they have a lot of fat with the muscle where when you eat organics, they'll start to be leaner muscle. So it'll actually look a lot better, but your size may come down. So if you're really obsessed with being the bulky where you can't fit through the door, that will not happen on organics. You will start to lean down. Um, but I don't think anyone ideally wants to be... They want the muscle is what they want. They don't really want the added size. They want to have solid, huge muscle, right? I mean, that's what the guys want. But yeah, we... Um, Jai Rich is pretty ripped, and we we don't really do much, but we do a little bit of nunchucks and just, you know, we're so active with all of our social media stuff and um, walking. I walk everywhere. But because we don't have a car. But other than that, we don't do. I used to do push ups, but then I found uh, I didn't like it. Um, it made me too buff looking. I'm like, I, I look buff enough as is. 
Um, so I didn't want that, but um, I can do push-ups. Uh, I can do regular military push-ups because I was in the Air Force. No, I don't do the girl ones. I do the regular man push-ups. Um, but anyways, so, and that's because of organics. Like, when I was heavier, I had a really hard time doing push-ups. As you drop the weight, you're like, you can do things like push-ups. I used to, like, struggle. I remember when I was in the Air Force, I struggled because of my weight. I actually was heavy when I first went in, which was not heavy. Listen to this. When I first went in the Air Force, they had the weight uh, thing was if you were a five foot six girl, which I am, you couldn't be over 150 pounds. No, 145 pounds. You couldn't be over 145 pounds. That was the max weight to enter. Now I'm sure they've adjusted it. But I was... Um, 155 pounds it was the heaviest I ever was um which is not that heavy I know but that was for me because I've always had eating disorders so if anything I tended to be lighter and you know look more anorexic looking but um uh but be eating a ton you know and throwing up but anyways so I was five foot six and 155 pounds and my recruiter weighed me and he said you have to lose 10 pounds before we you can even join and I was mortified because I had always you know thought I'd been thin or whatever and they told me I was too heavy to join the military I was like jeez I was so embarrassed so I um I exercised and I threw up I started throwing up actually then it's kind of when my bulimia started a little bit I was exercising more but then I was like forget it that's ridiculous so I literally started kind of like throwing up and then um that and then I lost the weight to get in and then I lost like 30 pounds in basic training and I wasn't throwing up then it was just because I wasn't barely eating um because I was I was a vegetarian back then I was a vegan so all I ate in basic training was like a little bit of the um, vegetables because they didn't have any vegan options back then this is in 2002 um I joined right after 9-11 so very few people were vegan I started being vegan in 1995 and that was not, I had to get a book to research about it to figure out how to be vegan. And it was not something that people were doing. That's why I chose it. I wanted to be difficult because I, I was kind of anorexic and I wanted to be difficult. And so I chose something that would be like, where, oh, I can't eat that. I can't eat this. But I found out with vegan, I got overweight um, because I chose a lot of ready options and sugary options instead of meat options because meat is your best option. And so then I panicked and started the bulimia. And that was all during the time. So I was vegan when I went to the recruiter. So they tell me I have to lose weight. So then I lose weight. And now I'm thinking they must have changed the requirements because I believe people have to be over 145 pounds, most people joining the military. I mean, because that's not very much weight. Um, so crazy. That, and that's only, you know, what has it been? How many years now? That was 2002. So we've really, uh, we've changed the regulations, I think, for things. We've had to change. Um, I know they had um, all of these things of you had to, a certain waist you had to have um, size in the military. I'm sure they've had to change that. They've had to adjust it because we are having more and more people overweight. And it's because of the food and the caffeine. Um, it's not that people can't control themselves. They want to act like it's your fault or you're not being active enough or this and that. No, it's the food and the caffeine. If you're eating the wrong food, it doesn't matter how active you are. You're not going to lose weight. That's the misconception. They say, oh, just get active more. I mean, there is a point where you can, you know, if you work out enough, you can, and it's, a, you know, calorie in, calorie out, you can burn yourself out to probably but that is not a way to live and like I said ultimately that actually doesn't even work because your body goes no oh, and starts just throwing its fat because you can't it's a still like I said that's still an eating disorder even if you're doing it through exercise so your brain doesn't like that because you're still doing this thing where you're over consuming and then you're compensating by working out and a lot of people do that like they eat more than they should but they go oh, I'll just work it off or they eat and then they go work it off later because they feel bad about eating. But it's still, um, it's that constant, like, you should never be, exercise shouldn't be in compensation for what you ate. Exercise should just be because you want to be active and then you should just eat. Does that make sense? So we just eat and then we just exercise once in a while. We don't exercise because we ate or we don't exercise to eat more. 
And then when you do it that way, you won't overexercise because people overexercise so they can eat more. That's what a lot of people do. I know I used to do that. Oh, let me get my 500 calories burn at least so I can have a 500 calorie smoothie when I leave. That's what I used to do. And I could figure out my weight kept going up and up and I was driving me nuts and we were working out more and more. We were going to the gym for two and a half hours a day every single day. We even went Christmas Day. For two years, we did not miss going to the gym one day. We went on Christmas. We went every single day. We went on our birthdays. We went on New Year's. I mean, every, we went every day for two years, for two and a half hours every day. Because I would go to a class. I would run. They have these indoor tracks at the LVAC, the Las Vegas Athletic Club here. And so we've done it all, you guys. And I'm telling you, this is the way easier route. Eat right, and you don't have to kill yourself at the gym. I don't know why people don't want to just eat right. It's so much easier. It's so much easier. It's like eat right, and then guess what? The weight sheds off. You feel good. You want to be active, and you don't feel like eating more. You see, the bad food makes you want to eat more. That's why you can't stop because it turns off the sensor in your brain until you're full. That's the other thing sugar does. That um, So you need sugar for survival, but you only need like 30 grams a day. The rest is an overdose of sugar. And sugar is a drug. So over 30 grams of sugar is an overdose of the sugar. And what happens when you overdose of sugar is it, um, it uses it for things like uh, feeding uh, diseases and cancer and candida, uh, which is a fungus in your body, which everyone has. But you can have an overgrowth when you feed it too much sugar. Um, and that's what bulimics get. That's what I had. Um, and uh, cancer is only fed on sugar. So if you cut out sugar, you can get rid of your cancer. People go, what's the cure for cancer? Get rid of sugar. In all forms of sugar. See, people want to just say sugar-free. No, sugar-free is not sugar-free. Because that, that's not getting rid of the cancer. Because you're going to cause all that issues, like I said, with all the, like, producing insulin and all kinds of stuff. No, no, no. Sugar-free means you're not eating anything that's, like, it's the stuff from nature that doesn't have sugar. Not stuff that they made sugar-free. Does that make sense? So things that don't have sugar from nature. So you really want to avoid too much fruit, too. People want to eat uh, organics and they want to uh, just load up on fruit. Fruit is very high in sugar, so you want to do very, very minimal, minimal fruit. People go, oh, all these great antioxidants. And things from yeah, from minimal fruit. A couple berries, you get your antioxidants. Not the whole barrel. Not the whole smoothie. Three berries. And a half a banana for the day. People have this misconception that you can eat all this fruit. Fruit is super high in sugar. You're almost worse off sometimes eating fruit than going for other options because people will think fruit's okay, so they'll, like, literally overdose on fruit and think that's okay. Whereas if they were choosing something like, if they thought it was sugary, like cookies, they might not eat as many, but the fruit, they're like, oh, it's fine. So they do fruit, 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 fruit. So they end up getting more sugar with their fruit option than if they had chose like a cookie option. Because the cookie, they would have limited themselves where the fruit they thought was healthy. And if you're doing the juices, that's just going right into your bloodstream. So that's just instant energy, but instant weight gain. Because it goes right in your bloodstream, and then anything you don't use immediately gets stored as fat. So that's that instant energy, because you didn't have to do anything to convert it to energy. But then what happens with that is any excess gets stored as fat, and like immediately. Because usually what happens is when you consume sugar, if you were to eat it, if it was something that had to be chewed, then it takes time. You start your digestive process, you're chewing it, you start to, you're, that's taking, converting it, and um, you're using calories to do all the digestion before it gets in to then that's why it takes longer to get the energy sometimes when you're eating something than when you do a beverage but most sugary things are instant anyways so um, but if you were to actually anything that requires digestion would take longer that's why people will choose a sugary option because they want that instant satisfaction but then they're going to feel tired after all because it doesn't give them what the other things do like Protein from meat takes a minute to digest to convert to energy, but it's long-term. 
and then you'll feel full all day and you won't need to go for another sugary option. So that's that. So if you guys are struggling with what to eat during this quarantine, hopefully that ends soon because this is nonsense, then go for animal protein and eat a lot of it. People go, oh, the animals. I love animals. Like I said, choose the options where they're not having cruelty to animals and then also know that um, it is okay to eat animals. That is a part of nature. Um, eating the dead things is part of life and everything um, is living and dies when you consume it. So whether it be plants, whether it be things that were made in a lab, they are now living organisms. So you are always consuming death. So what people, that's an argument I hear from vegans is they don't want to consume death. Well, you are whether you're a vegan or not um, because you're eating plants that are living <laughs> And anything they made in a lab is living now. So you're always eating death. And you want to. You gain knowledge from the dead. And animals are okay with giving up their lives on Earth because they get to go to the next uh, um, dimension, which is a lot better for them than this current one because most animals don't have the best existence on Earth because humans kind of overpopulated and we made it not so fair for the animals. And that's the vegan's argument, and that, that is unfortunate. But unfortunately, we stu <clears throat> we do need to eat animals to be healthy. We thought that we couldn't, and that's why we're seeing so many health problems, because everyone wanted to become vegan and vegetarians. There's a real big uh, push right now, especially with the celebrities. And they're really pushing for the vegan and vegetarian. You'll hear, so-and-so just became vegan, and all oh, they're doing a vegan diet, and this and that, and you see vegan on everything, and on labels everywhere. It's really become real popular, and um, it's not healthy. You're going to be heavy if you're a vegan, heavier than you want to be. People go, oh, I'm a vegan and I'm super fit, but you probably work out a shit ton if you're super fit and you're a vegan. There are some of those vegan athletes, they work out way harder than the guys that are eating the meat. Yeah, you can if you want to work way against the force. If you want to go way against everyone else. But the people eating the meat protein are having great protein, they're feeling good, very light exercise to get the same body where these vegans are having to kill themselves because they're eating such a high sugar diet so they're having to work out way more to compensate for all the sugar so it's just how hard do you want to work if you want to eat vegan then uh, kill yourself and eventually it won't work too at the end of the day because your body figures out and it'll just start storing more and more fat you just can't work off the sugar fast enough Especially if you're doing it in beverages. Anyways, you guys, uh, Jared, are you around? I need to get off here. My butt's getting tired. All right, I'll just turn it off. I think he probably fell asleep. I'll turn it off and then just reset the photo so that you guys. Can. Otherwise, all you see is a chair. But thanks, everyone. I had fun. I hope that helps. People, if you're struggling, eat meat. Eat meat. Oh, Richard. Yeah. My periscope wasn't on. It's how you pump and take a dump. Not to death. I'm not impressed. I'm not amused. I'm not confused. I'm not confused. I'm a grown man business. I'm not in school. Put your hand down, youngin'. This is not for you. I'm a jail, my deep with the Kanye, yo. Your name on the marquee, your name off the payroll. Style fresh. It's like I'm still a day old, and it's been like that since the day, yo. On more time than a Rolly or Seiko. Step on deck, your neck, or do what I say so. Get, get up or get out, get down. Get down. Let's move. Shout out to my man Kelly Kwame. We on top. Shout out, shout out. Check it out. Yo.